podcast. Hopefully it's loading up good on your end. As you know, we don't have an intro. We're going straight into it. I have a very heavy heart tonight. I have a lot of stuff that I want to show you in the Bible. And there's a high percent chance that this video is going to get taken down. In fact, let me check my Facebook and just make sure that it gets shared here so that everyone can jump in. It says I'm live. Let's see. Type something in the chat once you see me. Okay, it looks like we are live on Facebook and on YouTube. There's a chance that tonight's video is going to get taken down. So if you're here, you're here and you're going to be able to see it live. If you come back tomorrow and the video has gone, I did not take it down. So I'm here to tell you I'm not going to take this video down. This video will stay up. If you see the video gone, it's because I got taken down for community guidelines, copyright, or another reason. But there is a chance I'm going to get this video taken down. There was a, another guy that did a video similar his video has been removed off YouTube. So I'm letting you know now, if it gets taken down, then they took it down. I didn't take it down. So I want to share a lot that's on my heart tonight. I know no matter what I say, it's going to offend someone no matter what. So I don't want to hold back. I don't want to water this down. I don't want this to be lukewarm about what I have to say, which I usually never am. But I'm going to give you my honest and raw thoughts on what's going on in Israel. We're going to talk about end times, Bible prophecy. I'm going to show you Hamas in scripture. And then I have some news videos I want to just react to and talk about. Because I think it's important that we realize that there is prophetic significance in what's happening right now in Israel. And as a Christian, there are a lot of Christians right now that are not standing with Israel. There are a lot of Christians that are against Israel that are saying we've replaced Israel as the modern church. And I'm going to show you in scripture that we have not replaced Israel in the modern church. And I'm going to give you seven reasons why I stand with Israel along with a lot of other information. So again, if this video gets taken down, I'll record it and try to repost it. But it is what it is. The bottom line is this, everyone, and I'm very serious about tonight. I know there's already a lot of you on here. I want you to get serious about this because we're literally watching Bible prophecy happen before our eyes. Like this is the first generation in history where we are watching live Bible prophecy happen. And I get chills when I say that because as I'm, rec as I'm filming this, I've been having the news on live, different sources, different broadcasts, and I'm watching Bible prophecy unfold before our eyes. And I'm, and I'm seeing a silence in the church. I'm seeing a silence in so many Christians. And I know it took me a few days to even start talking about Israel. And the reason was, is I wanted to make sure I had some facts together. I wanted to do a few days of research and spend time before I just got on here and started ranting, talking out of the side of my neck. So I spent the last three to five days learning about what's going on in Israel, learning about why everyone's chanting free Palestine, learning about Hamas, learning about the political parties, the region, so I can get on here and give you guys some factual information. I'm just blown away by the silence of the American church, it kind of reminds me of when Roe v. Wade was overturned and all of these pastors that are so verbal about everything else, they were silent about abortion. Now we have literally a massive biblical war happening and the church is silent once again, doesn't want to stand with Israel, doesn't want to talk about Bible prophecy. Why does this matter? If this was just a war like Russia and Ukraine, hey, you know, we do a video, we pray, all of that stuff. But the reason why this isn't like Russia and Ukraine, the reason why this isn't like when the U.S. went to war in Iraq and Afghanistan is because Bible prophecy revolves around Israel. Bible prophecy revolves around the Middle East. And as Americans, we don't really stand with Israel or think about this because our churches don't teach on Israel. Our churches don't teach that. We teach replacement theology, which says Israel is no longer relevant. The church has replaced Israel. But I want to remind you guys of something. Israel did not get grafted into the Gentiles. The Gentiles got grafted into the Jews, the Israel, God's chosen nation. We got grafted in as wild olive branches. So there wasn't a replacement. There was a grafting into. So no, the modern church is not. And I'll give you seven, seven reasons why we should support Israel later. But we've not replaced Israel. Right now, as I speak, there is a Israel's declared war on Gaza on Palestine. And there's an active war going on. And things are changing minute by minute. As it stands... It seems to be that the, uh, the Israeli defense forces are going to do a ground invasion. Not when, not if, but when. So it looks like they're mounting up. They were going to do it this weekend, they said, but the weather was bad, so it probably will be this week. And inevit inevitably, countless lives will be lost in this war. It is a sad thing. And we're not just tonight going to pray for Israel. We are also going to pray for our brothers and sisters and our Christian, our Christian brothers and sisters in Palestine, in Gaza. And we're going to pray for the innocent people in Gaza that will inevitably lose their life during this war. But here's what I want to be clear on. Right now, Israel is responding to a terrorist attack. And this is why I might get into some territory where the video might get taken down. This is a terrorist attack. Hamas is 
according to the UN, according to the US and many other countries, a terrorist organization. Now Hamas has a political wing and they have a military wing. The bottom line is this, they're a terrorist organization. If you don't know what happened, they launched an attack on Israel, a terrorist attack, and Israel is responding to that terrorist attack. So we need to be clear that this is Israel's response to a, a terrorist attack. I don't want to get into debates of, well, this person's wrong and this person's right and this person's this. This is a biblical sign, not just the sign of the end times, but one of the signs. So I'm not here to get on here and say the world's ending. Everybody pack it up. We're done. I'm here to say it's just one of the signs in these last days, not the sign, but one of the signs. And we also need to be praying for God to open up Israel's eyes to Jesus, our Messiah. We need to be praying just because they reject, just because the Jews, the Orthodox Jews reject Jesus does not mean God no longer has a covenant with them. Does not mean God has broken his covenant because they reject him. So it's not about, this is not about who's right and who's wrong in the last 50 years or 100 years or Israel took Palestine's land and they want their land back, which by the way, just to put it out there, the land belonged to God's people. God gave them the land long before, just so you know, long before Islam, long before Muslims are around, God gave that land to Israel as a nation. So just want to be clear, you guys got to remember Islam started 600 plus AD. Like Islam is an add-on. Christianity was there long before Islam. And I don't even want to get into Islam because I already have videos exposing it. It's a complete cult. But these are Islamic extremists that have attacked Israel and killed now 1,400 innocent lives. So don't think of it as like, well, Israel's been, it's not but, it's not but, it's they maliciously came in and performed a satanic attack on the Jewish people, the biggest killing of Jews and attack on Jews since the Holocaust. And so what you need to understand is we're not here to debate politics of, well, 100 years ago, this is, a, this is a response to a terrorist attack that could lead us into a World War III, depending on whether Iran gets involved, Hezbollah gets involved. The U.S. has already sent Navy ships over there. Basically, we've sent ships over there to say, Iran, don't cross this line. Don't cross this line. So we've, we've sent them over there as a show of force, but the U.S. has said today, that they're not planning on engaging in combat, but they have sent, they have told soldiers, be ready within 24 hours to go over there and to help, not with combat, but with medical and other things. But the US is saying to Iran and other nations, do not get involved in this. So this was an attack, the worst act of violence towards the Jews since the Holocaust. And we'll watch some videos and look at some of the horrific stuff that's been happening. So why does it matter? Because write this down, Bible prophecy revolves around Israel. This is very important to know. Bible prophecy does not revolve around California. Bible prophecy does not revolve around London or Egypt or Europe or uh, it revolves around Israel. This is where Bible prophecy revolves around. So when something happens in Israel or there's a war in Israel or there's a war in Jerusalem or wherever, where there's a war going on there in the Middle East, as believers, we need to have our eyes open because it's not just another war. Now, this is a war from Hamas's angle. They're fighting for their, their God, their false God, the God they call Allah. They're fighting for him. So this is why you're seeing this intense bloodshed. Hamas is not going to war just for politics. They're going to war for their God. So just like us Christians would say, we would be martyred for Christ, right? Somebody broke in my house and said, renounce Jesus or be martyred. I would be martyred for Christ. So think about that same boldness we would have for Christ to die for God. They also feel that way. These terrorists also feel like we are willing to die for the cause. And this is why you're seeing suicide bombing and horrific crimes that are unspeakable. Some of the stuff that's confirmed by autopsy reports to have happened, like 40 babies that, have, that got beheaded in a nursery while their parents watched, that was confirmed by autopsy reports that Israel did once they retrieved the bodies. So you need to understand the horrific crimes that are happening. This is a terrorist organization that is fighting for their false God, that is fighting for their demonic God. There are demonic beings at play. There are satanic forces. I don't know why no one's talking about this, but this is satanic. This is demonic in nature. You don't behead 40 children. I, I saw a report today and I'll, I'll show a video of that report of a mother covering her child, her baby. They shot the mother in the back and then beheaded the baby. And they found this mom over her baby. The baby had been beheaded. They were literally getting people in this village, tying their hands behind their back, getting the people's phones out of their pocket, filming 
them getting beheaded and then sending the video of them being getting beheaded to everyone in their contact list. Friend, there are satanic forces at work. And I know tonight is graphic what I'm talking about, but you need to know this is happening right now. So we need to be praying. What could we do? We can, we can pray. We need to pray. So prophecy revolves around Israel. This is a satanic attack once again against the Jewish people who have been attacked more than any other race or people in history ever. I was looking up all the anti-Semitism attacks on Wikipedia and I kid you not, there's thousands of attacks since the beginning of time till right now on the Jewish people. Why do you think? Because those are the people God has made a covenant with. Israel is the only nation, write this down, that our God has made an everlasting, I'm going to show you this in the Bible tonight, covenant with. So Bible prophecy revolves around Israel. Jesus is coming back, and if you don't know, he's arriving on the Mount of Olives. The same place he gave the Olivet Discourse and said, when are you coming? What are the signs? The Bible makes it clear in Zechariah, he's coming right back to the Mount of Olives. In the book of Acts, they said in the same way he left, right there he left, he's coming back. So the same way the Lord left Israel, he's coming back to Israel. This is, Jesus is not coming back to California. He's not coming back. Some of you think, oh, he's coming back to Dallas, Texas. or coming to Dallas, Texas. No, he's not. Jesus will arrive in Israel. This is why it's important. It's the nation God made an everlasting covenant with. Now, N Israel is not perfect at, at all. There's t just like any nation. Go read your Bible. If you think Israel's perfect and you think I'm here to be like, Israel's perfect and Israel is this and try to come be a spokesman for Israel, you haven't read your Bible. The entire Bible is about Israel continuing to rebel and fall and God extending grace to them and God bringing them back. And I'm going to talk about free Palestine in this entire argument here, but I want to build the case and I want to make it clear, and this is public information, Hamas is a terrorist organization. And I know there's people right now watching that are in Palestine. The video I posted about Israel the other day, a guy said, I'm literally in a bomb shelter in, Pal in Gaza right now. Thank you for making this video. Please continue to pray for us. Again, we sympathize with those in Gaza. Israel has been putting flyers out by the tens of thousands saying, get out of Gaza. We're going to bomb and we're going to continue to fight Hamas and exterminate them, which is about 30,000 soldiers they have. Get out of Gaza. Get out of Gaza. Israel's been saying this over and over and over again. What you tell me what nation or what country is about to respond to a terrorist attack and says, by the way, if you're innocent, get out. We're going to give you time to leave. So they're telling people, we don't want no civilian casualties. But when they go in there to fight Hamas, who has tons of underground tunnels all through Gaza, if you're a civilian and you stay, there's a chance you will die. And that's why they're saying, telling people to flee. It's a terrible situation happening right now. It's absolutely horrible. But let's just remember that Hamas is the one that started this. Okay? Israel didn't inv invade Gaza just randomly. They're going to invade because Hamas attacked them in a very, very brutal way. Remember, the battle's intense because Hamas, a terrorist organization, an Islamic terrorist organization, is fighting for their God. And this idea that Islam is, is peaceful, brother, we don't teach. Friend, the, the Quran literally teaches to behead those that don't follow Allah and don't follow Muhammad. So it is a, it is a very violent, to the text, it's a very violent religion. Now, you might be a peaceful Muslim. You might be Muslim. You might be Islamic and peaceful. But the text, your textbook, tells, tells you to behead people. That's the bottom line. It's in your textbook. And there's a satanic spirit at work again in Hamas. Now, also, I want to say this to all my Palestinian followers and those of you that are watching. Hamas does not care about you. I'm sorry to tell you. Hamas does not care about you. They have put you in harm's way. They have started a war that you don't want. And now the water, the power, all this stuff's being shut down. Israel says, we don't, no water going to Gaza, no power going to Gaza. And you guys are like, why? We don't deserve that. But this is what Hamas has done to you. This is a result of Hamas's reign. And I want to say they said 30% of Palestinians stand for Hamas and another 70% don't like Hamas. But when people say free Palestine, free Palestine from Hamas, free Palestine from a terrorist organization. This terrorist organization does not care about you. They want to use you as human shields. They've already displayed that they're using you as human shields. They hide their weapons in hospitals and schools. There was already plans on the dead bodies of the Hamas fighters in Israel saying their leader told them attack elementary schools and attack hospitals and elderly centers. So these people are ruthless. They don't care about you. They are demonic. And isn't it just like the devil 
that doesn't care about his, his people, just like the devil doesn't care about his people, Hamas, who is fueled by satanic power, fully embodied by demons, doesn't care about you. If you are a Palestinian and you think Hamas has your best interest in mind, they absolutely don't. They're the ones starting this war, and we need to pray that this war ends swiftly and that Hamas is completely, as Israel said, eliminated because they are fully satanic. And there is a spirit behind this, just like in Daniel chapter 10, right? Daniel's praying 21 days, an angel comes and says, I've been battling. What was the angel battling? The prince of Persia, a demonic power that was reigning principality in Persia. And the angel said, Michael's fighting the prince of Persia. And after I get done talking to you, Daniel, I got to go fight the prince of Greece. What is this? It's a heavenly battle. These are spiritual forces at work here. You see these men that are beheading babies, killing the elderly, taking hostages, mutilating pregnant women, going to a peace festival concert, killing 400 people brutally, mind you. And R-A-P-E, women and children and babies. It's absolutely brutal and satanic. This is fully a demo demonic powers at work here. Now these are men carrying out these demonic powers, but Hamas is a fully satanic organization. Just like Ephesians says in Ephesians chapter six, our battle is what? Not flesh and blood. So we're not warring against people. Our fight is not against the Israelis or the Palestinians or the people here or the people there. Our battle is not even against the people in Hamas. Our weapons are not carnal, but mighty through God. It's a spiritual battle. So this is the battle happening right now. This is a spiritual battle taking place, just like in Daniel 10, just like Ephesians 6 tells us. The horrific things that we're seeing happen, the vile satanic things, can only be done by demons, by people that are fully given over to demonic spirits, just like in the Holocaust, taking pleasure and torturing people and killing people. And again, those of you that are like, stop, oh no, Islam's not, guys, please, this is all public information. Just watch the news. What I'm saying is not just my opinion. This is factual things that are happening right before us. Again, I'm going to tell you all about Israel and why the Bible tells us we should stand with Israel, but this is not about if you're this or if you're that. This is about a terrorist attack happened and, and, and Israel has resp is responding to that attack. This is how this started. Now, again, the Free Palestine slogan that some of you are going to spam in the chat, you guys put in the videos, and you guys are mad that we're talking about uh, your terrorist organization, your false god that is, tells you to murder women and children. Those of you that are saying that, I agree. Free Palestine from this terrorist organization called Hamas. That's what Palestine needs to be freed from. And I pray that y'all are freed from being ran by a terrorist organization. If my country was ran by a terrorist organization, I would want it to be free. I would say, please come in, remove this terrorist organization, um, and, pr and I'm praying that you guys get some serious leadership after Hamas is destroyed. But we can't sit by and act like they're the good guys. We can't sit by and act like Hamas is innocent and, oh no, I stand with Hamas. And it's despicable. It's despicable that celebrities, movements that I won't, I won't name because I don't want to make more of you manifest and mad, are standing by Hamas. Shame on every celebrity and every movement that is cool with Hamas, that's waving Hamas flags like they didn't just do something absolutely horrific that we've never even seen before. Now, we know Hamas is in the Bible. Like, this is my, where the video might get taken down because somebody did a video on this and their video got taken down. Hamas is in the Bible. In fact, the word Hamas is a Hebrew word that appears 68 times in scripture. Hamas is the Hebrew word for violence. And this is what a word st study guide says about the Hebrew word. They say it's a masculine noun, meaning violence or wrong. It implies, this is the Hebrew word, cruelty, damage, and injustice. Is that not what's happening right now? Now, I'm not saying that the Bible prophesied about Hamas, the terrorist group in 2023. Please, the Bible is much bigger than 2023. That's not what I'm saying, to be clear in the forefront of the video. What I am saying is the word Hamas is a Hebrew word for violence, and it is a biblical concept. But when the Bible mentions Hamas, it's not talking about this terrorist organization. But isn't it interesting that this terrorist organization is literally doing what the Hebrew meaning of the word is? So it means violence, wrong, cruelty, damage, and injustice. And it says this, the, this word study, in relation to physical violence, cruelty is applied. 
Judges 9.24. And aren't they cruel? Beheading children, killing, mutilating pregnant women, and all the demonic, disgusting things I can't even mention they've done. When coupled with the term instrument or a weapon, it becomes an attributive noun describing weapons or instruments of violence. Psalms 58.2 or verse 3 in, in Jewish literature. When described as a person, Hamas means an oppressor or a violent man. And then it quotes Proverbs 3.31 here. Now, the first time we see the word Hamas in scripture is Genesis chapter 6, verse 11. This is the principle of first mention. The idea that when something's mentioned for the first time in scripture, it usually holds precedence throughout scripture. But this is what Genesis chapter 6, verse 11 says. Now, the earth was corrupt in the sight of God and the earth was filled with Hamas. It was filled with violence. So is that a time in Genesis? This is where God decides he's going to flood the earth. Why was, why was God going to unleash this wrath on the earth? Why was God going to judge the earth? Because violence, Hamas, was filling the earth. And we're seeing that right now. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you tonight in a few minutes that Hamas is not just in Israel. I'm going to show you that Hamas is in the U.S. And that I'm going to show you undoubtedly that the spirit of Hamas, of violence, cruelty, again, we're not just talking about the organization, is happening right now in the U.S. I'm going to show you this. Look at Genesis chapter 6, verse 13. Then God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me for the earth is full of Hamas and because of them and behold, I am going to destroy them with the earth. So the Lord says to Moses, I mean, I'm sorry, to Noah, the earth is full of Hamas. It's full of violence. Again, not the terrorist organization. If you're like, are you really saying that terrorist organizations in the Bible and you're trying to tie in? That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the word Hamas is a Hebrew word. It's not a new word, but it's an ancient word. And this organization is carrying out the same satanic violence we saw all throughout the Old Testament, all throughout the New Testament, killing the Jews, persecuting the Jews. We saw it through the Holocaust, that same Hamas spirit that we're seeing even right now. So God makes it clear because of Hamas violence, the, the Hebrew word, he destroyed the world. So this is not just a word or a group. It is a spirit. And the spirit of Hamas of violence is at work in the earth even right now. In fact, we have Hamas in every city in America right now. Every city in America. There is not a city in America that doesn't have Hamas that has already invaded our nation. And that terrorist organization called Hamas in the U.S., they call themselves, this is their name. They won't, call, they won't tell you they're Hamas, but their name is actually Planned Parenthood. Every city in America already has Hamas attacking our very own people, and they're called Planned Parenthood. They're a terrorist organization that has claimed the lives of 70 plus million innocent babies since 1973. Now, it is absolutely horrific what happened this last week in Israel and the 1,400 that have, are dead and more wounded and, and more will end up dying. And as I'm speaking this, they're, they're continuing to launch rockets into Israel. I watched more rockets get launched into Israel today. So... But understand that spirit of Hamas and violence that God said, because this violence has spread the earth, I'm going to flood it, is happening right now. 1,400 brutally murdered, absolutely terrible, horrific. We're going to hear some of those stories. Brutal. 70 plus million innocent babies have been murdered by Hamas, aka Planned Parenthood, since 1973. And I'm not using the Hamas terrorist organization. I'm using the Hebrew word violence, cruelty, injustice this is fueled by that spirit of hamas and that ancient god moloch who loves child sacrifice and i want to be clear the terrorist group you guys say why why is it so brutal why is it so brutal the way they're killing people because the demons that are fueling them are bloodthirsty this is what you need to know the devil requires blood the devil is bloodthirsty these demonic powers are bloodthirsty they need the sacrifice of innocent blood and when you see these terrorist groups beheading people, filming it on their cell phones and then sending it to their entire text list of the people they beheaded so that you get a text from your son and you watch the video and it's your son being beheaded. How horrific is that? How demonic is that? Why? Those demons inside of these terrorist groups and these people are bloodthirsty. And I don't want to sugarcoat none of this tonight. Get mad all you want. Tell me I'm this all you want. This is the bottom line reality. These are satanic forces at work. And, it's, and those of you are like, well, Israel kills innocent people. I'm not saying that satanic forces aren't at work in them either. 
I'm not saying satanic forces aren't at work in our government. Friend, every country, nation. The Bible says in Revelation, the devil is the ruler of this world. That's why later, if we have time, I'm going to show you how God is once and for all going to rid the whole earth from these wicked armies and rulers at the Battle of Armageddon. But understand, Hamas violence is happening in every city in America right now as I speak. Joel chapter 3 verse 19 said, Egypt shall be a desolation and Edom, Esau's descendants, a desolate wilderness because of Hamas against the people of Judah. So because of the violence against the people of Judah in Joel chapter 3, Egypt, which is Esau's descendants, Edom and Edom, will become a wilderness. God says, I will judge. I will judge the, these people for the Hamas, the violence. Again, the Hebrew word Hamas, if you're just joining, means violence. For this is what it says in the Bible. Look at this. For they have shed innocent blood in their land. For Judah shall abide forever, verse 20, and Jerusalem from generation to generation. Verse 21. For I will equate them of the guilt of bloodshed whom I have not equated. Now, I was reading today in Psalms where it said all the nations try to destroy Israel over and over again, but Israel shall not be destroyed from generation to generation. The Jews have been attacked over and over throughout history and they still stand. They continue to rise again. The most hated people group historically and they continue to rise again. Do you think it's by chance because God is fighting with them? Do you think it's by chance that the Hamas soldiers are saying their God brings down our missiles that they're shooting missiles and the missiles are turning right back and, and blowing them them up and they're saying how is it happening the missiles are going up in the air and this happened in 2021 when um the, a, a similar thing broke out and they're saying the missiles are being diverted how is that possible is it possible that once again god's covenant with the jewish people not saying they're perfect guys a lot of the jews have rejected our messiah their messiah and we need to pray for the jewish people and we will tonight but just because they've rejected God doesn't mean God has broke his covenant. This is an everlasting covenant. God says Egypt will be desolate, a desolate wilderness. This is what a commentator said about this. Edom or Esau always felt that his twin brother Jacob had stolen. Look at this. I'm just saying, don't get mad at me. This is a commentator. He always felt like his brother had stolen what was his. And he made sure his children were fir firmly indoctrinated from their early childhood to hate their uncle Jacob, who was renamed Type it in the chat, Israel. So this is what the commentator said. The descendants of Esau included the Amalekites, the most hateful of Israel among Esau's descendants. And then the guy said, I suspect the Palestinians are from the ancient line of Amalek. This hatred for Israel is intense as ever among the descendants of Israel's brothers, Esau and Edom. The intense hatred for the Israelites, people of Israel. Today, we find his descendants in much of the Arab and Muslim populations of the Middle East. It is ironic that the Palestinians and Jews are from the same overall family. Both are children of Abraham and Isaac. Esau and Jacob were brothers. Palestinians and, Arab and many Arabs are really brothers or cousins to the Jew. But the bad blood has been boiling for, for a millennia. So there's this bad blood going on boiling. And again, I'm here to say I'm an American. I'm here just to say we need to pray for both sides. We need to pray for Palestine, that they would be freed from the grip of Hamas and that God would be with the innocent Palestinians, the innocent ones in Gaza, our, our, Christians brother, our Christian brothers and sisters. Let me remind you, there are Christians in Gaza. We have many brothers and sisters in Gaza and it's not a sin to pray for them. So this is not one-sided tonight. We're going to pray for both, both sides, for Israel and also for the, those in Palestine. Let me give you one more. Obadiah chapter 1 verse 10 and then I'm going to read a statement that Greg Laurie wrote that I think is really good and then I'm going to we're going to watch some videos and then if I have time I'm going to talk about the coming of the Lord the battle of Armageddon how this is a sign of the end times but I want to break all this down for you Obadiah chapter 1 verse 10 for Hamas against your brother Jacob or Israel remember Jacob's name gets changed to Israel for violence against your brother Jacob shame shall cover you look at what it says here and you shall be cut off forever so we see this word Hamas 60, what did I say? 68 times in the Old Testament, a word that means cruelty, injustice, injustice, violence, not just happening in biblical times, but Hamas is in every city in America happening through abortion and innocent blood cries out. I want to read Greg Laurie's statement. I shared this on my channel, but I'm just going to read out his statement on this. And then we're going to watch some of these videos that I have to show you, to show you guys. And we have some more stuff to talk about. He said, I woke up Saturday morning and I was shocked to read the headline. 
Israel is at war. Again, for those of you jumping in, there's 4,500 of you on right now. Let me remind you, Bible prophecy revolves around Israel. So you're like, why are you even on here tonight? It's no big deal. Why are you even talking about this? Bible prophecy revolves around Israel. So when something happens in Israel, if you're a Christian, you should open up your eyes. He's I was shocked to read the headline, Israel is at war. It is almost 50 years to the day, the last time Israel was officially at war in what was known as the Yom Kippur War back in 1973 when she was attacked by Egypt, Syria, and others. But this is a different kind of war. And let me stop real quick there also, and I, I won't keep interjecting. The wars that Israel has won from nations way bigger than them, surrounding them, they've been constantly attacked by the surrounding nations, are supernatural. They won these wars supernaturally. People are like, there's no reason why Israel should have ever been able to withstand Syria and Egypt and these massive nations. Yet once again, Israel is able to fight off these nations miraculously because the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is alive and is still protecting his chosen people, even if they, many of them reject Jesus as the Messiah. This is what Greg Laurie said. Thousands of rockets rained on Israel from multiple directions and Hamas gunmen invaded by land, sea, and sky. Hundreds of people have been murdered and kidnapped, and they're using what might be described as ISIS-like methods, targeting young women and children. They were using, oh, sorry, launching massive rocket attacks towards civilian population centers, as well as terrorist infiltration of cities and settlements close to the Gaza border. They literally went home to home, door to door, looking for young and for elderly. They took hostages of old women, little children, young women, and they targeted specifically, and I just want to add in there how much cowards Hamas is, absolute cowards, satanic cowards. They attacked, look at this, specifically civilians. Some of the women they took were survivors of the Holocaust. So some of the survivors of the Holocaust are now hostages right now. And I believe there's about 190 hostages, maybe more, maybe less. And we need to really pray they get released because the chances of them getting um, released are slim to none. To date, this number typically will only get larger. There's, a, as of now, 1,300 dead and 2,000 wounded. This attack is without precedent, causing the prime minister to say, we are at war. Israel's enemies, who are Israel's enemies? Who is Hamas? They're a terrorist organization funded by Iran, and that is not a secret. A spokesman for Iran, Ghazi Hamad, told the BBC that the terrorist group had received funding for the attack, according to the Wall Street Journal. So apparently a spokesperson for Iran says... Yeah, they receive funding for this attack. And there's a lot of speculation on Iran helping them with this attack, which if Iran gets involved, in my opinion, we're going to end up in World War III. But that's a whole other thing to talk about. Iran for a long time has stated their objective is to destroy Israel. They also have signaled that they are developing a nuclear weapon. In the past, they've threatened to, in their own words, wipe Israel off the face of the earth. And let me add my own statement here. Hamas has already said over and over again, we want to destroy every Jew and wipe Jews off the earth. So again, if you're still support Hamas, you are supporting someone that says we want to wipe the Jews off the map and completely capture Israel. One leader of Iran said, they ask, is it possible for us to witness a world without America and Zionism? But you had the best know that that is a slogan and their goal altogether obtainable and it surely can be achieved. So this is a leader of Iran says, yes, it could be achieved and it's our goal. The regime that is occupying Jerusalem must be wiped off the map. That's a leader in Iran. Interesting how it always comes back to Jerusalem. The Bible predicted thousands of years ago that the end time events would revolve around Jerusalem. Not San Francisco, not Los Angeles, not Moscow, not Paris, but Jerusalem. This tiny city in, the t uh, in this tiny sliver of land will play a key role in the events of the last days. It's the focal point of the end times. And it's amazing when you think about it because Zechariah 12, 3 through 4, God says, I will make Jerusalem like an intoxicating drink that makes the nearby nations stagger when they send their armies to besiege Jerusalem and, and Judah. So this is all Bible prophecy we're seeing right now. On that day, I will make Jerusalem an immovable rock. All the nations will gather against it to try to move it, but they will only hurt themselves. And that, guys, that gives me chills. They will gather to try to remove it, but only hurt themselves. And this is exactly, I'm not saying this prophecy is about what's happening right now, but that's exactly what Hamas has done. They've attacked Israel, and they're only hurting their people and themselves in this, because not only now are they going to get destroyed, but now innocent lives of their people, like I said in the beginning, I'll say it again, Hamas does not care about you. If you live in Gaza, Hamas does not care about you. If you don't know that, you need to open up your eyes. It's clear they don't care about you. Pay careful attention. Now, the irony of all of this is that the United States of America, through the Biden administration, just gave $6 billion to Iran or Iran. I'll say Iran. I know some of you say, well, it's Iran. I'm just going to say Iran. What a bad move it is to give money to a nation that sponsors terrorism around the world. And we all know this. 
Why are some of you in the chat like, that's not true, brother. Guys, we know this. We know Iran. These are the same guys that were celebrating during 9-11. Hamas was celebrating. They were celebrating during 9-11. So for you Americans are like, well, I believe what the celebrities have to say. You don't remember. These countries were celebrating when Americans were killed. Innocent Americans were killed. And this is what Greg Laurie says. But here's where students of Bible prophecy should pay attention. The Bible tells us in the end times that Israel will be scattered and regathered. This has happened. And this is really a sign to set the, that set the prophetic clock ticking. On the heels of the Holocaust, who had ever thought that the Jewish people who lost 6 million lives to the Nazis would somehow regather in their homeland, but it happened against all odds. On May 14, 1948, Israel became a nation, and I'm proud to say that the United States of America was the first nation to acknowledge that. But after Israel was gathered, the Lord said she would come under attack, specifically in Ezekiel 37 and 38. The Bible speaks of regathering of Israel, then it speaks of a large force from the north attacking her. This force is identified as Magog. Who is Magog? And then he says, listen, no one can say without cer with certainty, but many Bible students and prophecy teachers believe it's modern day Russia. I think you can make a very good case for that. If you get out a map of the Middle East and look to the north of Israel, you'll find Russia. Now, why would Russia want to invade Israel? Well, there's another thing in the Bible that says about Magog. If she is indeed Russia, that one of her allies will march with her is Persia. Persia is the ancient name of the modern Iran. So the Bible predicted hundreds of years ago that this large force from the north uh, of the north of Israel would attack her after she regathered and one of the allies that would attack Israel with Russia or Magog whoever it is would be Iran or Persia so Iran is when you see Persia in the Bible that is now modern day Iran and a lot of these places have been their names have been changed since Bible times not once in the past 2500 years has uh, has Russia formed a military alliance with Persia Iran but they have recently developed a special connection Russia has signed billion dollar deals to sell missiles to Iran and the Iranians have helped the Russians providing them with drones, weaponized drones to use in the Ukraine war. That's again, no secret. Bible prophecy before our eyes. How do you even stop something like this? Let's just say for the sake of the point that Israel decided to strike out, out at Iran specifically because they're funding all of this. What would that produce? Well, it could produce a conflict we read about in Ezekiel 38. The Bible says that Magog will come against her will. The Bible describes hooks in her jaws, pulling her forward almost as though Magog is coming in reluctantly along with her ally Persia or would be Persia would be Iran. Am I saying without certain am I saying with certainty that this will play out? No. But if you get up in the morning and read the headline, Russia attacks Israel, fasten your seatbelt because you're seeing Bible prophecy fulfilled in your lifetime before your very eyes. And let me interject my own words here. Right now we are seeing Bible prophecy happen. Right now, not not the sign of the last day and the end times the world's ending. That's not what I'm saying tonight. But it is a sign, not the sign but a sign happening right now. It's a crazy time to be alive where you can get on TikTok and see footage of Bible prophecy, like on the news, on lives. So the fact that many Christians and churches are ignoring this is mind blowing to me. I think maybe there's just ignorance of end times and book of revelation and Bible prophecy. So he says, what should Christians be doing in light of this? Two things. Jesus said, now when these, th these things begin to happen, look up and lift your heads because your redemption is near, which I believe it is. That's why we need to be doing, we need, we need to be looking for the soon return of Jesus Christ. But he also said we need to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. That's Psalms 20, 122 verse 6. We want to pray that they arrive at some kind of peace. We want to pray that this terrorism stops, that they're able to get their hostages back. And we want to pray that God places his hand of protection on the nation of Israel during this unprecedented war. Again, and that was the end of the article. But again, I want to say, although Israel, the Jewish people are attacked over and over again, they keep rising. They keep rising out of all of these attacks on them. They keep rising over and over again. So I want to now. Well, this weekend, CB. Okay, let's see. I want to watch some of these clips. I don't think it shows graphic content, but it is graphic content verbally what I'm going to show here. But I want to look at some of these clips here. And we're just going to react and see kind of what's going on. And then I want to talk about their coming of the Lord. And I want to talk about some end times if I have the time. I know we're 40 minutes in, but I do want to watch some of these videos, react to these. And hopefully I don't get copyright strike. I'll have to talk a bit and pause here and there. But I hope I don't get copyright strike, but I do want to highlight some of the horrific things happening so you could have your eyes open and you could be awake that we're living in end times right now. We're living in the last days. Biblically, the end times would be the tribulation period, but last days are the time up until the tribulation period. So we're in those last days right now. Let's watch this. News gained access to one of the Israeli communities targeted in the initial attacks from Gaza. 
CBN's Chuck Holton went to see firsthand the destruction of this once peaceful farming community. Children's toys lie scattered in the midst of shell casings and burned out cars. The smell of death lingers in the air, a pungent reminder of the hellish attack just over a week ago. Colonel Golan Vash gave a tour of the village, describing what he found when his team first arrived, only hours... Again, just viewer discretion is advised here. They will be talking about graphic things, but I think you need to hear this to know what's really going on right now. After the area had been retaken from the terrorists. We found a family outside, exactly where you're standing right now. But oh. it was only the beginning of what we saw inside. In this corner of this living room, we find a concentration of eight babies oh. burned among. I want to remind you, those of you that are supporting Hamas in the chat right now, this is the despicable, vile acts that you're supporting. Absolutely despicable, satanic. I've already argued the case. This is a satanic spirit. There's no other explanation for this. Pure incarnate evil, these terrorists are. And those of you that are, oh, Hamas is going to, they don't care about you. This is despicable what, what we're hearing about here. 15 other people. They came in here and slaughtered about 10% of the residents of this kibbutz. These are children, old people. And you can just see the incredible destruction that was wrought here. And the last terrorist was cleared out of this kibbutz a week after the initial attack. So think about that. A week after the attack, did you hear what he said? The terrorists were still in this village hiding. And what happened was they were clearing out the terrorists and then they, the terrorists would be hiding for days, pop out and start killing people. It was just absolutely horrific knowing there's a terrorist in our village for a week. And this is just absolutely crazy. So their plan was to use it as a bargaining chip and to take everyone hostage here. Instead, they got an incredible battle as soldiers from the IDF came in and killed all of the terrorists. I think that some of the terrorists who come hiding in the houses, for example here, wait silently in a high readiness for 12 hours or 16 hours and then they get up. So every time that we saw that we cleaned the area and everything was silent, suddenly another 12 or another 20 we'll got out. out yeah. So he said they were hiding for a week and they thought it was cool and then all of a sudden 15 or 20 would pop out and start terrorizing the town again. When the village was finally cleared, rescuers turned to recovery and what they found will stay with them for the rest of their lives. I found a mother lying, protecting her baby, and she was shot in the back, and the baby was beheaded. You've been all over the world. You, you respond to rescues in crisis. Describe how this compares to what you've seen around the world. Nothing compared to that. If we needed any, anything to, to convince us, we cannot use the same democratic tools that the world use. It's not the human rights that you in your mind think of. Right now, there is no place for feeling. We are professionals. We need to achieve our goals. And our goal is to ensure that the Hamas um, organization is no longer exist. This is what we're talking about here. And I want to also say for those that don't know, um, the IDF, Israeli Defense Forces, have an official autop an autopsy, basically, center where they're bringing all these bodies in to confirm. So the, the 40 babies beheaded story was confirmed by the Israeli Defense Forces spokesman. I watched that video earlier saying, yes, we did an autopsy on all of these babies and we confirmed they were beheaded and their parents were in the room watching because, again, these are terrorists that want to inflict as most, most brutality as possible. So they're saying we're going to make the parents watch us behead their babies. And then, the, and then the parents are killed after. So again, it's horrific. Some of the stuff that they talked about, I won't even repeat just because it's just so dark that it's like, oh, it's so dark. But yeah, for those of you saying that was uh, CNN said that was a lie. Number one, I'm going to show you a story from CNN because I want you to hear a guy's testimony. But CNN is, not the, is probably the worst news station you can listen to. Literally, the Clinton News Network is CNN. So we already know they constantly lie. They're the worst news network. If you're getting your facts from CNN, you should probably find a new, a new news source to listen to. You see these pictures of 
people with their babies, their children. I just and it's these are real people. Guys, these are real people. Pictures of children in the house. These are not far off, detached, like fake people. These are real people like you and me with families, with loved ones, and that's their village is destroyed. Pictures of the loved ones. So again, those of you homos that are defending this garbage, look at these pictures and say you can defend that. For those of, and I want to also say the celebrities that are defending Hamas, if you want to know what side to not be on, look at the side celebrities are on. Look at the side the alphabet community is on. And then you'll know, oh, I probably shouldn't be on the side of all these satanic celebrities. Like it's, it's a very good way to know what side to be on. The celebrities that are full of Satan are on Hamas's side. Maybe that's not the right side of history. Maybe I'm on the wrong side of history. I just wanted to live a peaceful life. And on the 7th of October, that peace was shattered. And now their home looks like this. All this region, we must clear from this kind of threat. If we want to provide our citizens the security, the protection that we could not give them last Saturday. The battle to retake Be'eri may be over, but the war is just beginning. And as these IDF troops marshal their forces within sight of the massacre, every one of them knows exactly what they're fighting for. From Southern Israel, I'm Chuck Holton for CBN News. These are disturbing images, but don't turn away. Uh, don't look away from the horror of what occurred and is still occurring. The rockets are still fa falling in his Israel. We can't turn away from this. Centuries ago, there was a Canaanite religion that offered up babies into the fire. And when you see babies burned to death, yep. when you see babies yep. beheaded, call it for what it is. We are looking at the face of evil. Yes. Now, the same perpetrators, the same people that did that, that burned children, were shouting, God is great. That's what Allahu Akbar means. That is no great God. We are looking at pure evil, and it needs to stop. Future generations will look at us and say, what did yep. you do? 100%. When you were faced with that kind and of... I want to say to the mods, if there's anyone in my chat right now supporting Hamas or being like, this isn't f false, Hamas isn't bad, feel free to instantly ban them because they're you're despicable if you're supporting a terrorist organization. That's all I have to say. There's 5,100 people live right now on Facebook and YouTube. You don't need to be here. Okay, if you want to come in here and start supporting Hamas, you don't need to be here. We're just going to ban you from the chat. You can go find another news source that you want to watch. The evil you had vowed never again. What did you do to stop it? I want to be able to answer them to say, we stood in our generation and we stood for truth. We stood for life. We come against any culture of death because that is what this is. I want to also show you now a story from a father who's, again, I don't watch CNN, but they, they covered a story of a, a father that was inside the, this village when this all happened. So I want to, I want to show you that. This is beyond sad. Offensive operation. Here. I'm sure that we ask ourselves all the difficult uh, uh, question update. For now, there are more pressing questions. The bodies of more than 100 residents have been recovered, but the army says that many more are still missing. You can see the amount of blood. This was a massacre. And the full scale of the horrors that transpired here are just starting to come to oh. light. Pictures, family photographs on the this wall. Is that, this is that same village that we just looked at that was first attacked, the small farming village of about, about 1,000 people. This is that same village here. Thomas waited two agonizing days before getting the news. They just said, we found Emily. Uh, she's dead. And I went, yes! I went, yes, and smiled. I want you, I want you to see what just happened here. This guy had an eight-year-old daughter in this village that was sleeping over at a friend's house. And they said, we found your daughter and she's dead. And he screamed, yes. I'm going to replay this. And I want you to catch with this how horrific this is. Having an eight-year-old myself, I just can't even imagine. We're getting the news. Again. They just said, we found Emily. Uh, she's dead. 
And I went, yes! I went, yes! And smiled. Because that is the best news of the possibilities that I knew. That was the best oh. possibility that I was hoping for. She was either dead or in Gaza. And if you know anything about what they do to people in Gaza, that is worse than death. That is worse than death. The way they treat you. They'd have no food, they'd have no water. She'd be in a dark room filled with Christ knows how many people and terrified every minute, hour, day and possible years to come. So death was a blessing, oh. an absolute blessing. Makes me sick, man. Clarissa Ward, CNN. Be'eri Kibbutz, Israel. I want to actually show I, I want to bring I in now Ahal Besoria. Oh, his eight-year-old daughter, daughter Ellie, at ease and in no apparent hurry. I missed the story. I apologize. Thomas Hand heard the gunshots and immediately thought of his eight-year-old daughter Emily, who was staying with a neighbor. She doesn't do it very often, but unfortunately, that night, that particular night, the Friday night, she went to sleep at her friend's house. For 12 hours, he says he was pinned down under heavy gunfire, unable to reach his daughter as Hamas went door to door executing. Sick. These people are demonic animals, fully incarnate with Satan and his spirit. And I have no words. It's absolutely sickening. His neighbors. I'm waiting. I'm thinking the army are going to be here soon. You know, just hold on a bit longer. And longer. And longer. By the time the military gained control of Be'eri, this is what remained of the once tranquil community. Late Wednesday afternoon, Israeli so then forces we go let to journalists he, in for the first time, now this will make more forgetting sense here. the news. They just said, we found Emily. Uh, she's dead. And I went, yes! I went, yes! and smiled because that is the best news of the possibilities that I knew. That was the best possibility that I was hoping for. She was either dead or in Gaza. And if you know anything about what they do to people in Gaza, that is worse than death. That is worse than death. The way they treat you, they'd have no food, they'd have no water. Oh man, it's so sad. Again, this is what you're supporting. The reason why I'm showing this is I want to show you guys this is what you're supporting when you're in the chat saying free Palestine and that you're supporting Hamas. So here's, uh, let's see, what's this one? Let's watch this. I have a few queued up here. We'll watch. Hi from the Israel-Gaza border is Chaim Mailspin. He is a member of the IDF's Yehalom unit, which is one of their special operations forces. So this is a few hours ago posted, and uh, like this is just updated current what's happening right now. Chaim, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, there was news yesterday that because of the rain and the low cloud cover, that any ground operation was going to be delayed. The big question across Israel that everybody is asking is, when might this ground operation begin? What can you tell us? Yes, uh, I know we're all ready. We're trained. We are prepared. We don't want to be here. You know, we have families. I have three little kids. Uh, made my immigration from America, you know, 25 years ago here, Jewish family. But we have to defend our kids. We have to secure our borders. So this is a soldier, one of the generals saying, this is what we're fighting for. We don't want this war. We didn't choose this war, but we have to fight for our children. We have to fight for our families. And I would do the same thing. I would do the same thing. I'm not going to lay down and let these terrorists come in and just kill my wife and kids and family. So how, how could you blame Israel right now? How could you be like, well, you don't understand. What, understand what that a terrorist organization infiltrated a nation. Now the nation's responding and you guys are mad about that. That Hamas is a terrorist group according to the United Nations and pretty much every other country identifies them as a terrorist group. And yes, yes, we are doing our part. Our unit specializes in, in rescue and all kinds of special um, missions. 
questions that the regular army isn't prepared for. Um, but yes, I did hear word that it is delayed. The major entrance this is, is from delayed today. to dismantle Hamas is delayed for a few more days. It's unclear exactly. I believe it's Shabbat now. Okay, someone in the chat said, <sighs> I just lost it because there's so many of you commenting right now. Saying free Palestine is not the same as siding with Hamas. That is no different than a small terrorist group attacking Canada than blaming all of America. Brother, Hamas literally runs Gaza. Gaza is fully under the control of 30,000 terrorists. What are you talking about? They run, they run Gaza. They're controlling Gaza. That's on record. So, yes, free Palestine from the power of Hamas. But to say Hamas is a small terrorist organization... You haven't seen, you haven't done any research on Hamas, their political power or their military power or their ties with Hezbollah and ISIS and Iran and every other terrorist group. So I don't, I don't know what you're saying there. You should be, you should want Hamas to be destroyed and then have a legitimate, a legitimate government established in Gaza because right now it's being ran by a terrorist group. So Israel already, I think in 2005, gave up the Gaza Strip, said you guys can have it and Hamas came through the leaders off of buildings and took over. So what do you mean Hamas is a tiny terrorist group? Coming up Saturday that you actually will have the major, of course, you, you know there are missions going in uh, that we don't talk about, mm -hmm. uh, but it, it, they're the big, big one is supposed to be in a few days, not tonight. Um, here's the thing is we have to recognize we gotta be good shepherds. There's a shepherd over us, right? And America understands that. I think that people that haven't had enemies at their door for a long time fell asleep. They forgot what it is to have enemies. Uh, and so when you have a real enemy, you need to address that. You need to stand up and be a good shepherd yourself. And so that's what we're doing. Hi, uh, this is Sandra Smith uh, in New York. Thank you very we'll much for joining us. Obviously, very difficult uh, conditions for you we'll to come teaching. to us live. We appreciate that. Uh, as we continue to realize that this ground invasion into Gaza is imminent, and you've got these major evacuation orders out of northern Gaza into southern Gaza, 1.1 million people. This is a huge operation. Right. Um, the tunnel system. Can you talk to our viewers about Hamas's uh, uh, extensive tunnel system under Gaza? And then for those of you that are like, well, Hamas doesn't run Gaza. They literally have tunnels throughout the entire city. How do they? <sighs> and what that will mean once this ground invasion eventually occurs? Oh, there's definitely a lot of information that I, again, I am uh, a sergeant major in the combat engineer elite force. Uh, I'm not an official spokesperson. I can say I do speak English, Jewish man. Mm -hmm. uh, I, and here's the thing I can say, having been in many tunnels, having done this for many, Suketan, cast lead, uh, in many, many wars and missions, including in Lebanon in 2006, I can say that our, our unit knows- I'm gonna the, give you guys seven of, reasons after this biblically why we should we should stand with israel not just in this situation but period for real i mean tom cruise in mission impossible would have a very hard time to to get deal tunnel threat i'm telling you what it's intricate it's a labyrinth it's all booby trapped there are even a, there's some uh concern that russians supplied um mega bombs and i want to also add they've already found that the terrorists are using just to throw this in there, weapons that we left in Afghanistan when Biden pulled out of Af and left all of our weapons there. You guys already know that whole tobacco that happened. These terrorists are already confirmed are using our weapons. Yes, our weapons, our taxpayer dollars that bought the weapons. The terrorists are using it when we left them in Afghanistan. That's a whole nother day. And you guys know I'm not a political stream. This is the first time I even probably have ever talked politics like this on my platform. But this is just so despicable and demonic. I have to talk about this. Maybe uh, awaiting under the ground, even before we get to the tunnel. So uh, there's a lot of speculation. I can't give exact information. I can say that we're doing our absolute best training with the top precision. Uh, I know that we looked really good. We looked really good recently. Now it's time to, to show these criminals, these um, grotesque terrorists, that that terror will not that is not going to continue our families will be safe and security will be restored yeah you know i i know heim that uh in the past couple of days the israel all right let's go to let me take this off let's go back to 
me think of what I want to do here. Let's go back to talking about Israel, and then I'm going to share a little bit of the end time stuff. I have so much stuff. I'm trying to think of what I'm going to cover. I want to give you now seven reasons why I stand with Israel and the church should stand with Israel biblically. And I'm not talking about in this war, which I do stand with Israel in this war. Hamas is attacked. Destroy Hamas. Okay, I'm not a pacifist. They attacked. Bear arms. But that's not what I'm saying why we stand with Israel biblically in a general sense. I'm going to give you seven reasons why we stand with Israel from the Christian embassy in Jerusalem. They put this together. It's powerful. There's a lot more than seven, but I want to give you seven. Number one is God loves Israel. The prophet Jeremiah states this clear. The people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. The Lord has appeared of old to me saying, yes, I love you. And this is what he says to Israel with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I've drawn you again. I will build you and you shall be rebuilt, O virgin of Israel. And that's Jeremiah 31, verse two, uh, verse two through four. After a season of God's judgment, God is motivated by his everlasting love. That means love that doesn't run out to destroy Israel. I mean, to restore Israel. So it's an everlasting love, never ending. Deuteronomy 7, 7 talks about that as well. This is God's plan. God's love birthed his plan for Israel. And this love also brings it to a glorious end in Romans 11, 25 through 28. And I'm going to go through these quick. And then the, the guy who wrote this from the Christian embassy in Jerusalem said, someone once said, how can God, and this is a question many of you are asking, how could God love a nation as sinful as Israel? And the answer is plain and simple. He has unconditional love. The Lord has t- love towards the church the same way he has love towards the, t- the uh, nation of Israel. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Romans chapter five, verse eight. So here's a simple rule for all believers. We should love what Jesus loves. So if we, Jesus loves Israel, if God has love for the Jewish people, even though many Jews reject him, we should still have love and we should still love them as a nation and stand with them because this is God. Again, remind you guys, Jesus is coming back to the Mount of Olives. If you're a Christian and you're like, where is he coming back? The Mount of Olives. Now, if you hate, if you hate what I'm saying tonight and you're Islamic or Muslim, I get it. I get it. You want it. Your book says to kill us. Your book says behead us. So I understand why that might make you mad. But as Christians, we need, to, we need to stand for a nation God made a covenant with. Number two, God is a covenant-keeping God. That's number two if you're taking notes. God affirmed his promise to give Israel the land of Canaan with a sworn covenant in Genesis. We read how God appeared to Abraham to promise him a land and his December, descendants as innumerable as the stars in the heaven. Abraham replied, how can I be sure you will really do this? God answered by coming down like a burning torch, which passed through sacrificial animals to seal the land of promise with Abraham by covenant oath. That's Genesis chapter 15, verses 17 through 18. One of God's main character traits is that he's a covenant keeper. Some say God changed his mind about Israel or gave up on them or established a new covenant with the church, which is the new Israel. But that would be catastrophic news for every believer today. With our every sin, lukewarmness, or lack of commitment, Do we need to fear that God will change his mind about us too? So he's saying, look, if we're lukewarm, if we're in sin and we lack commitment and you say God changed his mind about Israel, does that mean God is going to change his mind about us too? No. Therefore, if we're unfaithful, here's the principle. God remains faithful since he cannot deny himself. Second Timothy chapter two, verse 13. So this great hope for both Israel and the church is God is a covenant keeping God. So in the same way, when the church is in disobedience or rebellious, God doesn't break his covenant with us and say, I don't have a covenant anymore, but God's unfailing love continues with us. It's the same way for the people of Israel, the Jewish people that reject Jesus, the Messiah. God keeps his covenant. He's a covenant keeping God. Reason number three, why I stand with Israel is God hallows his name. In Ezekiel chapter 36, the prophet describes how God will restore the land and people of Israel in the last days. When Ezekiel sees them returning from the nations and being filled with God's spirit, he gives a reason why God is doing this. Ezekiel 36, 21 says this. This is God speaking. I had concern for my holy name, which the house of Israel had post profaned among the nations wherever they went. Then he says this to Israel, not for your sake, but for my name, holy name's sake, I will restore you and I will sanctify my great name. The nation shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God. When I'm hallowed in you before their eyes, when I'm holy in you, it's hallowed is his name before you, their eyes. I will take you from among the nations, gather you out of all the countries and bring you into your own land. That's Ezekiel 36. Um, this is what happened. It was in what, 1948? 
when Israel became a nation, God said, I will gather you from all countries. Guys, this is in the Bible written thousands of years ago. And God says in Ezekiel 36, 24, I'll bring you to your own land. This is Bible prophecy. And then he says, it's rather astonishing that the world media is so preoccupied with Israel 73 years after its establishment. And the Swiss theologian Karl Barth stated in 1967, now you can rend it in the newspaper. God is fulfilling his promise. Or as Ezekiel said, God is sanctifying his name before the world. By looking to Israel, the world can see that God is alive and God is a promise keeping God. So think about this thousands of years ago, God said, I'll bring you back to your land. And then God does it thousands of years later. We saw that happen in 1948. What a, what a faithful God that we serve. What a covenant keeping God that says, I'm not doing it for your sake. Again, those of you like, well, Israel's rebellious. They re reject Jesus as the Messiah. God says, yeah, I'm not doing it for their sake. I'm doing it for my sake. Number four, Israel is a key for revival and blessing for the church. That's number four. And you guys can rewatch this. I'll maybe post this as a separate video. According to the Apostle Paul, Israel's full restoration will release an unprecedented blessing to the church. In Romans 11, Paul makes two amazing statements. He says, now if their fall is riches for the world and their failure riches for the Gentiles, how much more fullness? That's Romans 11, 12. And let me just say what, characterize what Paul was saying. Paul was saying, if their fall was riches for the world and their failure riches for the Gentiles. So in other words, Paul was saying, because the Jewish people rejected Jesus, think about this. The Jewish people rejected Jesus. The Gentiles got the blessing because it was supposed to be for the Jews, but they rejected Jesus. So now the Gentiles got the blessing. And this is what Paul says. If their failure, if their fall, if them rejecting Jesus was riches for the Gentiles, how much more their fullness, how much more blessing when they receive Jesus, who by the way is a Jew. And then in Romans eleven fifteen. 15, for if they're being cast away is the reconciling of the world. What will their acceptance be but life from the dead? So Paul says, listen, Romans eleven fifteen. 15. If, they're, if them being cast away, God rejecting, saying, okay, I'll, I'll give it to the Gentiles then. You don't want it? It reconciled the world. He says, what will their acceptance be but from life from the dead? Paul presents it as almost a mathematical formula. Looking at Israel stumbling and casting away, he sees a blessing released of riches for the Gentiles and reconciliation of the world. Then he looks to Israel's future, their fullness and their acceptance, because I believe in Jesus' name, there will be a time where Israel fully embraces Jesus as their Messiah. I prophesy that. So Paul looks forward to their, to their acceptance of, of Jesus, the Messiah, and foresees a greater release for the world, and that's life from the dead. It's amazing. John Wesley commented on these verses. What John Wesley said about these verses. So many prophecies refer to this grand event that is surprising any Christian can doubt of it. When it's accomplished, it'll be such a strong demonstration of both the Old Testament and the New Testament revelation that doubtless will convince many it'll release overflowing life to the world which was once dead. So John Wesley on these verses says, it'll release unprecedented revival when the Jewish people, when Israel accepts Jesus as the Messiah. In Acts 3, 19 through 20, Peter also sees that a spiritually restored Israel will release times of refreshing in the presence of the Lord and the times of restoration of all things, which the Hebrew prophets spoke about concerning Israel and the worldwide family of God in the last days. That means Israel's restoration is a key for everyone who thirsts for an outpouring of God and what God has in store for the church. So if you thirst for revival, he says, pray for Israel. All right, number five, I only have a couple more here and then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the signs of the times and the coming of the Lord and give you undeniable proof that we are in the last days and this is the time to repent. Some of you are on the broadcast. Our church was packed on Sunday every service because people are like, oh, this is like a sign of the times. Like war in Israel? This is like Bible stuff. So some of you might be in here with that mentality. I want to talk to you about that as well. So get right. Tonight's tonight to get right. And we're going to, we're going to also pray for Israel tonight. The reason number five, our roots are in Israel. Romans 11 contains a botanical miracle. Paul refers to a natural or noble cultivated olive tree. And this is very important. And a wild olive tree. So Paul's talking in Romans 11. And I did a whole verse by verse of every verse in Romans on my channel. It's like 10 plus hours. You can go watch that another time. But he says there's a cultivated olive tree. There's a wild olive tree. Wild olive trees are scrubs that bear an edible fruit. Paul then describes God doing something no farmer would ever do. Think about this, okay? So you have a wild olive tree. You can't eat these olives. They're inedible. And then the Bible, and then the commentator says, Paul describes God doing something no farmer would do. 
He cuts the limbs from the natural tree and grafts the wild olive branches in place. Normally, this process is done exactly the other way around. Noble branches are grafted onto wild trees to improve their fruit. But Paul relates the strange grafting to Israel and the Gentile nations. The wild Gentiles are grafted into the noble Jewish olive tree by faith in Jesus and are nourished by the rich sap of messianic hope arising from their prophets, patriarchs, and kings. Just so you guys know, and let me add this my own statement, hatred to the Jewish people and the land of Israel is satanic. It's satanic in nature. Why? It's the only nation God made a covenant with. These are God's chosen people. So what does a farmer do when a tree's dying? A farmer takes a healthy branch and grafts it into the dead tree to bring it back to life. Paul flips that on its head and says, God took a healthy tree and, uh, and grafted a dead tree into the healthy tree. Israel was the healthy olive, olive tree. And God took us, the Gentiles, which if you don't know, you're a Gentile if you're not a Jew, and grafted us in, grafted us in. So we were grafted in. There was no replacement. You guys are like, well, we replaced the church as the new Israel. Where's that? There was no replacement. We were grafted in. Paul therefore tells the Gentile church in Rome to remember that you do not support the root, but the root supports you. That's Romans 11, 18. We always need to keep in mind that our spiritual roots, our spiritual roots are not in Rome, Geneva, or Azusa Street. Our spiritual roots are in Jerusalem with Hebrew prophets, Jewish apostles, a Jewish savior, and a Bible written by Jews. And you want to know about that? Go read Ephesians chapter 2. So let us honor our spiritual, spiritual roots, knowing Paul also declares that one day original nature, natural noble branches will be grafted back into their own tree. And again, the Bible continues to prophesy that the Jewish people will one day receive Christ. And that will be our prayer tonight, and that should be your prayer for Orthodox Jews. Now, there's a lot of Messianic Jews that, of course, see Jesus as their Messiah. Uh, Radar Apologetics, who's in the chat, is a Messianic Jew. Jonathan Kahn, Messianic Jew. Dr. Michael Brown, Messianic Jew, okay? Not every Jew denies Jesus. Let's be clear on that. I'm talking about the overall sentiment of Israel and Orthodox Jews that deny Jesus. We're talking about them. Um, they will be. And, and some of you guys, listen, I'm just going to be nice about this. Some of you are in the chat saying, oh, drink your Zionist Kool-Aid. You are clueless. Beloved, you are clueless to what you're even talking about. Okay, just because you follow some YouTube preacher and you watch one of his videos about replacement theology, you think you know what you're talking about, but you're clueless. So again, there's 5,300 people watching. Not to be cocky or arrogant, if you don't like what's being said, you are an adult, go somewhere else. Go somewhere else. You don't like this? Go somewhere else. It's not salvific. It's not a salvation issue. You can still watch me. Just tune out tonight. Tune out tonight. Okay, because some of you, I'm honestly confused if some of you are like, are in Hamas. Like I'm, I'm confused. Are there, are there Hamas soldiers in the chat? Maybe, maybe there's some people that are in Hamas here. Cause the way some of you are defending Hamas and this terrorism is, it makes me, it's a little sus. It makes me question like wh where you're really at. Reason number six, why I stand with Israel is the Bible commands us to comfort Israel. Finally, the most importantly, we need to bless Israel because God commands us to do so. Isaiah delivers the divine imperative saying, comfort, yes, comfort my people, says your God. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 1. This is clearly not a call to the Jewish people. Otherwise, they'd be comforting themselves. Rather, this is a call to the Gentile people who serve God to stand alongside Israel and bless and comfort her. It is a command for a time when Israel's warfare has ended. That's verse 2. A time where God is restoring Zion. And Isaiah 40 is clearly not suggesting a discussion, a point where he invites our opinion. God himself, the creator of the heavens and earth, calls out the stars by name tells us to arise and comfort and love his people. Reason seven, and then I'm going to go into Matthew and I want to look at some of these signs and then show you how we're literally in the last days. Reason number seven, the Jews are the family of Jesus. This might be the most powerful reason. Jesus is a Jew. And just in case you're brand new to Christianity, you don't know this. Paul puts it like this, of whom the fathers and from whom according to the flesh Christ came who is overall the eternally blessed of God in Romans chapter nine, verse five. Um, he said, I spoke about this in a church of Bavaria. A brother came to me after service and said, yes, it's true. Jesus was born to a Jewish mother, but you forgot one thing. When Jesus rose from the dead, he received a glorified body and he stopped being Jewish. And now he's a universal brother of all mankind. 
I was truly impressed. Jesus, the universal brother of all mankind, it sounded amazing. But in my Bible, I read in Revelation that Jesus in his glorified body is the lion of the tribe of Judah. That's Revelation 5.5. 5. And the very last words of Jesus in the Bible, standing out in red letters are, I, Jesus, am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star, Revelation 22.16. So the last words of your Bible, Jesus says, I'm the offspring of David. I'm the root and the offspring, the bright and morning star. So the last chapter of the New Testament, Jesus reminds us that his great, 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 great grandfather is a Jewish king from Jerusalem. And by serving the Jewish people, we serve the earthly family of Jesus and truly believe he takes notice when we do. Those are seven reasons. There's more. You can search it up of why I support Israel and stand with them. So let me, let me go into this. When it comes to the last days, you have to remember the key to timing. It's not just one sign that we're seeing. It's a collection of signs. So if this was the only sign right now of the last days, I'd say, well, maybe we're not. And some of you go, we've been saying we're in the last days. Let me show you this in scripture. There's always been one or two signs throughout history, but we're now living in the first time where there's every sign taking place. Remember Luke 21, 28, Jesus said, when you see all of these things begin to happen, look up, your salvation is near. So what things? All of these things. It's a collection of events that we're seeing take place that signal the last days. Now the end times are different than the last days, okay? The end times is the tribulation period, the seven year tribulation. The last days are everything that is up to the tribulation period, okay? First John chapter two, verse 18. Dear children, the last hour is here. This is very important. Do not click off this broadcast. This is what John says. Dear children, the last hour is here. You've heard that the Antichrist is coming and already such Antichrists have appeared. From this, we know that the last hour has come. I want to ask you guys a question. Thousands, 2,000 plus years ago, John, in your Bible, in my Bible, says the last hour is here. This is inspired by the Holy Ghost. So I'm not making this up tonight. I'm not pulling this out of the Book of Mormon or some false textbook like the Quran. John says the last hour is here. 2,000 years ago. So you guys tell me in the chat, for those like, oh, brother, you've been saying it's end times. You guys keep saying, for those of you saying that in the chat, if John says we're in the last hours, you tell me what we're in right now. 2,000 years, what are we in? John says 2,000 years ago, last hour. Could it be we're in the last minutes? Now, somebody's like, I'm scared. You should be. Get right with God. If you're not right with God right now, 724 Pacific time, October 16th, you should be scared. You need to get right with God because we're in the final moments. Daniel chapter 12, verse 1 says, Michael, the archangel who stands guard over your nation will arise. Then there'll be a time of anguish greater since any nations first came into existence. But at that time, every one of your people whose name is written in the book will be rescued. So the end times will be the most terrible time in human history, but God will preserve his people. And the disciples asked this, when is the end of the age? Now, I want to show you something interesting. Let me pull up my Bible on screen for those of you that don't have a Bible ready to go. Is that that? Okay. This is something interesting you might not know. Okay. Let me move the chat over here. The signs of the end of the age. Look at what it says in, in Matthew chapter 24, verse three. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, think about this. Maybe you didn't know this. Jesus is about to, I get chills reading this. He's about to tell us about the end of the world and when it's going to be on the Mount of Olives. What have you learned tonight, guys? What is the Mount of Olives? the place where Christ returns, according to Zechariah. So he's on the place he's going to return, talking to his disciples about his return. And again, for those of you Israel haters, you're not going to hate Israel when Christ returns there. Just type that in the chat. You're not going to hate Israel when Christ returns there. I'm going to show you this. Verse 3. Let me move this over. Okay. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came privately saying, Tell us when will these things be and what will be the sign of your coming in the end of the age? Very plain question. When are you coming back? And, the, and when is the end of the age? Some people say, well, Jesus says he doesn't know. Let's read the text. Because he actually tells us what the world will look like when he comes back. Verse 4, and Jesus said to them, take heed so no one deceives you. For many will come saying, I'm the Christ. And that word Christ is the anointed one. Many will come and say, I'm anointed. I'm the Christ. And they'll deceive many. So we know that's already happened. That's happening all over. Tons of false prophets. And Islam is a great example of that. They claim to be the savior. They claim to be... Islam came 600 years after Christ died. Okay. 
Some would say it's an add-on, downloadable content. Islam is not new. I mean, Islam is not original. Um, they took our land. Friend, Christianity was around thousands of years before you even knew what taking your land was before Islam was even around. Go read your own, your own history of Muhammad having a demon come to him. He got in depression. This is on Wikipedia. And went to his family and they said, that wasn't a demon, that was an angel. Literally, Islam was, the inception of Islam was a demon coming to Muhammad. That's a whole, I already have a whole video on that. So I won't even start there. Verse six. So what's going to happen? Get ready. Everybody buckle up. Here's the signs. And I just said, you've been seeing the signs in front of you. You've been seeing the signs in front of you on the news, live on YouTube. We're seeing signs. We watch signs tonight of this time. You'll hear of wars and rumors of wars. Has that happened yet? Yes. Yes. See that you're not troubled. All of these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So just because we see one sign, wars and rumors of wars, don't freak out. The end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there'll be famines, global hunger. We have that happening like never before. Pestilences. Anybody remember something that just happened for like two or three years? It was the biggest sickness in history, and uh, it was like shut everything down. I don't, I don't remember the name of it. But do you guys remember that? I don't know. It was like 2020 to 2020. Something happened. I don't, I don't fully remember. But it was a pestilence. This is global sickness. That's what a pestilence is. And earthquakes. By the way, there was five earthquakes in Afghanistan last week. And er, you just go look up the advancement of earthquakes. Look up how many earthquakes are happening now. It's unprecedented, the amount of earthquakes. So what's happening? The signs are increasing. And earthquakes in various places. All of these are the beginning of sorrows. So we're in the beginning of sorrows. And guys, I don't want to scare you and freak you out, but let me show you what happens next. These are the sorrows, okay? We're in the times here. Verse nine, then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. I know I'm not going to go into this. I'm post-tribulation. I know a lot of you are pre-trib and you're like, God would never allow us to go through tribulation. I hate to be the one to break it to you. They will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. God allows us to be killed for his glory. This is the whole book of Acts. It started out, the church was born in martyr's blood. Every disciple, except for John, got martyred. And they tried killing John and couldn't. And then they exiled him to the island of Patmos, where he wrote the book of Revelation. So if you think, God's going to rescue me from the tribulation, God would never allow me to go through tribulation. Every disciple died, martyred, hung upside down, sawn in half. Peter said, I'm unworthy to die like my Savior. And they hung Peter upside down. This American fluffy gummy bear gospel that's like, God would never let me go through the tribulation. Maybe it's because you serve Jehovah Care Bear, not Jehovah Jireh. Yes, tribulation is part of the Christian life. Again, pre-trib, post-trib, it's not salvific. You could land where you want to land. I hope it's pre-trib if you believe pre-trib, but I, I believe biblically it's post-trib because I believe that's what the Bible teaches. But I won't go into that. Me and Dr. Michael Brown have a video on that. Go watch the channel. You can find that. Okay, they will kill you and you'll be hated by all the nations for my name's sake. And we're seeing this. I mean, we're, we're hated. We're hated right now here, but persecution is mostly worldwide. Most nations persecute Christianity. And then many will be offended. They'll betray one another. They'll hate one another. I mean, if that doesn't describe the church, many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. We see that all the time. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. We are in the most lawless generational generation ever right now. Okay. But he who endures till the end shall be saved. And then look at the kicker here and the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as the witness to all nations, and then the end will come. So God says, I'm not leaving it up to wars and rumors of wars and global sicknesses and famines and the signs. I'm leaving it up to, this is our job, church. This is why I'm online. I don't even want to be online, to be honest with you. I'm only on here because right now I'm reaching 5,300 people. I couldn't do that in a church building. Okay, we're reaching, we just passed 150 million views yesterday on our channel. 150 million views yesterday on our channel. How could that happen? It couldn't happen in person. So what is, what am I doing? Why? Why does it matter? Why am I, why am I, and hear what I'm saying here, wasting my life on this? And I say waste facetiously, just like the woman wasted the alabaster box on Jesus. You can't waste on God. I say waste my life because the unsaved thinks I'm wasting my life. The carnal person thinks I'm wasting my life. Why am I spending my whole life on this? This is why right here, verse 14, the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. So we are going to see a gospel preaching movement of the gospel being preached all over the world before the end of the age. In the tribulation time, if you haven't watched my videos on the tribulation, go watch them. Angels are preaching the gospel. The two witnesses are preaching the gospel. 
and then the end will come. So the end can come at any time. With the advancement of technology, we're able to reach people we were never able to reach before. The end can come at any time. Look what Matthew 24, 32 says. Actually, let's just put it back up on screen. Verse 32. Watch this. Is it on screen? Sorry, I have like 10 screens open here. Okay. Verse 32. Let's see. Now learn, and this is important. This is important for us tonight. Now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branches has already become tender and put forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So it's talking about when you see things changing, signs, right? We just talked about the signs. So you also, when you see all these things, know what all things are the things we already talked about. Know that the end is near at the door, at the doors. So, we're, so the end is at the door right now. According to Jesus, the end is at the door. I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words by no means will pass away. So this is what we're talking about tonight, looking for these end time signs. Now we know 2 Peter says there'll be mockers and the mockers will say, you've been saying this. Where's the promise of Jesus coming again? Before the time of our ancestors, everything's remained the same. But the Bible says this, a day is like a thousand. This is in 2 Peter 3. And a thousand is like a day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some of you think. But the Lord, look at this, is being patient for your sake. He doesn't want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. God does not one, want one person to die. One person to die. He doesn't want one person to perish, but all come to the knowledge of him and come to repentance. So the question tonight you're asking is, okay, what am I supposed to do? Well, guess what? 2 Peter 3, 14 tells us. Are you ready? And so, dear friends, while you're waiting for these things to happen, what things? The coming of the Lord, the great tribulation, the Antichrist to rise, the mark of the beast. Here's what you need to do. Get ready. And make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in God's sight. And remember, our Lord's patience gives people time to be saved. God is being patient. God can come back right now. But he says, I'm being patient so everyone can get saved. So I have to live pure and blameless. God is not a liar. He's not slow in his promise. You got to understand this. But God says, I want everyone to be saved. So there will be a second coming of Christ on the Mount of Olives, the same Mount that Jesus said, uh, they asked, when are you coming? He's returning there. Acts chapter one, verse six. So when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept saying, Lord, is it time for your free Israel and restore our kingdom? Verse seven, the father alone has the authority to set the times and dates and they're not for you to know, but you'll receive power and the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you'll be witnesses. But look what verse 11 says. And an angel shows up, verse 10, Acts chapter one, verse 10, as they strained to see him rising into heaven. So Jesus goes to heaven. Two white robed men stood among them, angels. Verse 11, men of Galilee, why are you staring into heaven? Jesus has been taken from you into heaven, but someday he'll return from heaven in the same way you saw him go. In the same way you saw him go. So there's going to be a man coming back and he's coming back to wage war on the nations. Armageddon is going to set stage for Christ to return to earth once and for all. The difference will be when he left, only a few disciples saw him. When he comes back, the whole world will see him. Look what Mark 13, 26 says. Everyone will see the son of man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. I want you to imagine this, okay? Because we're living in these close times. Every station, every channel, every smartphone, the entire world's attention will be on Christ's return. And all of a sudden, a man, the same way he left, will descend on a white horse from the clouds. Imagine the terror of God's enemies when he comes out of that cloud. When they gather to fight him at Armageddon, little do they know that the very breath of his nostrils will destroy his enemies. Matthew 24, 27. Just as lightning can be seen from one side of the sky to the other, so it will be with his return. Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. Look, he comes with the clouds of heaven and everyone will see him, even those who pierced him and all the nations of the world will mourn for him. So the earth is going to announce his arrival. The heavens and the earth and the sky will announce his arrival. Revelation chapter 6, verse 12 says the sun will go dark and the moon will turn red and stars will fall from the sky. According to Revelations chapter 6, verse 14, the entire sky is going to peel back and roll up like a scroll and the earth is going to begin to shake. Think about this. The sky is going to roll up like a scroll. 
The sun will go dark. The moon will turn red. Stars will fall out of the sky. The earth will shake. Revelation 16, 18. The largest earthquake that ever existed at his return will happen. It'll be so large, the Bible says that the mountains will disappear. The Bible says they'll know he's they'll know he cut when he comes, and the people will say, Hide us under the mountains, hide us in the caves, fearing the wrath of the Lamb. They will say, Who can escape the wrath of the Lamb and the one to come? These are the men that mocked him, that killed his followers. So you have to understand he's really coming back. Ezekiel 43, chapter 2. Suddenly the glory of God of Israel appeared from the east. The sound of his coming was like the roar of rushing winds and the whole landscape shone with his glory. Revelation 19, 11 will tell us what, what he will look like when he comes back. Look at this. Then I saw heaven opened and a white horse was standing there. Its rider was named Faithful and True for he wages fairly and wages a righteous war. His eyes are like flames of fire and his head were many crowns. A name was written that no one understood except himself. He wore a robe dripped or dipped in blood and his title was the word of God. So Jesus comes back on a white horse, robes dipped in blood, literally dripping in blood. Eyes are like flames of fire and he's wearing many crowns, but he won't be alone because he comes with an entire army. The Bible calls him in, in Psalms 46, 7, the Lord of heaven's armies and his heavenly army will be clothed in pure white linen and they'll follow him on white horses. That's Revelation 19, 14. And these, by the way, if you don't know who that is, that's us. Okay. We are in that army. When we get raptured at the end of the tribulation, we will meet the Lord in the air, which is what the Bible says. Notice when we quote the rapture verses, if you're pre-trib, you say we go to heaven. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible does not say we get raptured into heaven. It says we meet him in the air. We meet him in the air. Revelation 19, 14, and then we return as a heavenly army on white horses. These are those that have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. They won't arrive at Armageddon. Remember, he'll arrive at the Mount of Olives, according to Zechariah 14, 4. He'll fulfill prophecy in the same way he left, he's coming back. Okay, remember, he ascended from the Mount of Olives during his second coming. He'll descend onto the Mount of Olives, and the whole earth will tremble in his presence. And we know he's going to come back riding on a horse. He's going to declare war on the nations. He came on a, on a, a donkey, or he, he rode in Jerusalem on a donkey, which signals peace, but he's coming back on a horse signaling war. Revelation 5.5 5 says, but one of the 24 elders said, stop weeping. The lion of the tribe of Judah, the heir of David's throne has won the victory. He is worthy to open the scroll in its seven seals. Acts 17.31, for he set a day of judging the world with justice by the man he's appointed and proved to everyone that, was, that it's him by raising him from the dead. So this will be, his coming will be a time of judgment, a time of justice, and a time of destruction. Jesus will come, and I know a lot of you are like, my pastor never preaches this. Again, this is not the care bear Jesus you've learned about in the American church. Jesus will come back as a great army general. I know some of you right now are watching Israel, and you're like, we should be pacifist. We should not be about war. They should not go in there and kill Hamas. We need to be, I know, I know some of you think that, but I, but I just want to tell you, Jesus is coming as a great army general. Isaiah 47, 4, the Lord of heaven's armies. He will destroy his enemies. And these enemies he will come destroy include the Antichrist, the false prophet, and anyone that follows them. He's going to unleash the wrath of God, Revelation 19, 15. He's going to slaughter his enemies. Psalms 1, Psalms 110, verse 5 through 7. He'll destroy the nations in his anger, Isaiah 63, 6. And the, their blood will stain his clothes, Isaiah 63, 3. Remember, when Isaiah sees him, in the vision in Isaiah 63, he doesn't recognize him. He says, who is this that comes from the city of Edom, um, who comes from Edom, the city of Basra, whose robes are dripping in blood? So many people won't recognize Jesus when he comes because they're taught a nice little Jesus. And Isaiah says, who is this man? Who is this man that comes from the city of Basra? His robes are dripping in blood. So you have to see that. Someone says he's coming back twice. No, he's coming back once. If you believe in pre-tribulation, you think he's coming back twice. If you're like me in your post-trib, you believe he's coming back once. He raptures us, we meet him in the air, and we, he returns. That's, that's the second coming of Christ. The rapture is us meeting him in the air. He doesn't come back and get us in the rapture. We meet the Lord in the air, and we return with him as a heavenly army, Revelation 19. Pre-trib people believe he comes back twice, which is not biblical. He's only coming back once. Okay? The eyes of his enemies, the Bible says, will rot in their sockets. Think about this. Their eyes will rot in their sockets. Zechariah 14, 12. The blood of his enemies will be a river more than 100 mi 180 miles long. 
the river. So basically 180 miles long, that will take you several hours to drive. If you get in the car and say, I'm going to drive 50 miles an hour down the road, it'll take you over three hours. You're driving for three hours and you look to the right and you still see the river of blood. There's that much blood. The Bible says 180 miles, three hours of driving 50 miles an hour, three plus hours of rivers of blood from his enemies. Again, the idea that Jesus is coming back to just join our services is not scriptural. He's coming back to declare war on these wicked nations. The river of blood is so deep, Revelation 14, 20, it'll reach a horse's bridle. A 180 mile river reaching a horse's bridle, which is what, four feet, six feet, depending on how big the horse is. Jesus will not use traditional weapons. He will not use knives, guns, tanks, missiles. And I, I preached this a year, a year ago and got banned for saying what I'm about to say, but who cares? I'm preaching the Bible. He'll not use missiles or conventional weapons of war. The weapons he will use, man, I get chills talking about this, is more powerful than any weapon ever devised by human beings. The weapon he will use to destroy these armies. And you know what? It's an hour and 40 minutes. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to tell you guys all about the Battle of Armageddon as well. Type one if you want me to. 5,500 of you, I'm going. What is the weapon? Not nuclear bombs, not knives, not guns. The most powerful weapon. More powerful than a thousand atomic bombs put together. He will use the word of God. A sharp sword will come out of his mouth and strike down the nations. That's Revelation 19, 15. A single breath from his mouth will destroy his enemies. Isaiah 11, verse 4. The voice of him is so powerful, the heavens and the earth will shake. Joel 3, 16. He'll make war with the sword of his mouth. Revelation 2, 16. It's a powerful weapon that his words alone will destroy, destroy the armies of Armageddon. Type 1 if you want me to talk about that. Revelation 19, 21. The Bible says his voice splits the mighty cedars. Psalms 29 verse 5. It twists the mighty oaks and strips the forest barren. His voice strips the forest barren. That's Psalms 29 9. The scripture says he strikes with bolts of lightning. Psalms 29 7. It makes the barren wilderness quake. That's Psalms 29 8. It thunders like uh, mighty waters. Revelation 1 15. When he speaks, the earth melts. Psalms 46 6. Do you know the Bible says out of the breath of God's nostrils, the Red Sea was split? Think about this. Moses is standing in front of the Red Sea and goes, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And God goes, hmm. And out of the breath of God's nostril, not even his word, the Red Sea parted. So we're not talking about some weak God here. We're not talking about some Muhammad or some fake Allah that... The, the Muslims worship. We're not talking about some weak God that didn't rise from the dead. We're talking about a God that is more powerful than every army put together. The Antichrist will be so arrogant, he thinks he can defeat Jesus in battle, but he doesn't even come close. The Bible, in fact, gives no indication that the Antichrist can do anything to hurt, stop, or slow down Jesus or his heavenly army. The Antichrist will wield power beyond any human being ever. He'll be the most powerful person ever that will literally be Satan incarnate. Okay, no human power will be able to defeat the Antichrist. That's in Daniel 8, 23. Even the angels will struggle. He will be so powerful. The Antichrist, look at this. The Antichrist will throw angels to the ground, Daniel 8, 10. But the Antichrist is no match for our, our Lord and Savior. Okay, Jesus will destroy all the forces gathered there. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 8, out of the breath of, the, a breath of his mouth. The bodies of the fallen enemies will litter the landscape. God will prepare a great feast. He'll announce to the birds of the earth, come and eat the flesh of kings, generals, and strong warriors, of their horses and their riders, of all humanity, both free, slave, small, and great. Revelation 19.17. That's the battle at Armageddon. Look at what Revelation 19.19 19 says. Then I saw the beast and the kings of the world gathered together to fight against the one that sits on the horse and his army. Verse 20, and the beast was captured and him and the false prophet who did mighty miracles on behalf of the beast, miracles that deceived all those who accepted the mark of the beast and who worshiped the statue. Both the beast and the false prophet were thrown alive into the fire lake of burning sulfur. Their entire army was killed by this sharp sword that came from the mouth of the one that was riding on the white horse and the vultures gorged themselves on dead bodies. Okay. When people think of the battle of Armageddon, they think Armageddon, the end of humanity. That's not what the Bible teaches. Armageddon is a, is a battle that takes place at the place called Armageddon. It's a literal place 
that will host the most intense war the Earth has ever seen. This is where, at Armageddon, we don't know exactly where it's at, somewhere in Israel, this is where all of the world's armies will gather to fight him. So you got to understand that the Antichrist will convince every nation, every leader, every ruler to fight with him against God. And the Antichrist, who's again the most powerful human that's ever walked the earth, will think, will think he's powerful enough to fight God. And at the end of the tribulation, seven-year period, all the armies are going to gather at Armageddon in preparation for war. That's Revelation 16, 16 and Revelation 19, 19. They will come at the direction of the Antichrist and the false prophet. That's Revelation 16, 13. The Euphrates River will dry up, paving the way for the armies of the kings of the east. Revelation 16, 12. When all the armies arrive, the Antichrist will set up camp between the seas and the holy mountain. That's Daniel eleven forty five. The Antichrist at this time will rule the entire globe. Revelation 13, 7. The world will ask itself. This is the question of the world right here. Are you ready? Who can fight against him? He's so powerful, who can fight against him? That's Revelation 13, 4. He'll be powerful by the end of the tribulation. Every human rival the Antichrist had will be defeated. So it makes sense for the armies of the world to gather to fight, to basically at Armageddon to fight each other. The armies will wage war against Jesus. Revelation 17, 14. Look at what Revelation 16, 14 says. The miracle, these miracle working demons cause all the rulers of the world to gather to battle against the Lord on the great day of judgment on the God Almighty. Now you might say, why would these people think they're going to gather and, and defeat God? Who's arrogant enough to defeat God? Who's arrogant enough to think they can fight God? Remember, demons, the Bible says, miracle working demons are going to convince the people, deceive the people that they can beat Jesus. Revelation 19, 19. I saw a gathering of the kings of the world and their armies to fight against the one that sits on his on on the whor white horse and his army. So when they gather and prepare for war, they don't plan to attack each other. They plan to attack who? The one sitting on the white horse, and that's Jesus himself. What do these armies achieve? They want to achieve global power. Remember Revelation 13:2, the antichrist gets his power from Satan. Many people believe that Satan will indwell the Antichrist just as he did Judas in Luke 22, 3. So if Satan controls the Antichrist, we know what his motives are. We don't have to guess. The Bible tells us Satan's goal is to ascend to the heavens and sit above God's stars, sit on the throne of God, and to be like the Most High. That's Isaiah 14, 13. Satan fills the Antichrist and wants to be God. He wants to be God and even sits in the synagogues in the tabernacle and people worship him. So his desire is to basically go above the throne of God and have people worship him. Because remember, Matthew chapter 4, we know Satan craves worship. So does the Antichrist, Revelation 13, 15. So all of this explains why the Antichrist brings the armies of the world to, to Armageddon, to the place called Armageddon. We know that he wants to defeat Christ, but what does he have to gain? It's not super clear why the world wants to fight him, but it's probably... The same reason why they want to fight him today. People want to do their own thing. They don't want God in their way. The world thinks this. At Armageddon, this is what the world's probably thinking. We can remove God once and for all. Some of you might say, why would they want to fight him at Armageddon? The same reason why the atheist spends their life trying to disprove him. The same reason why people are fighting him right now. They don't want no one ruling and reigning. Don't tell me what to do. That's witchcraft. That's rebellion. That's the devil. So they'll think they can fight Christ because he's the source of the tribulation judgments. They're taking their anger out on God's the source of tribulation judgments. We're going to fight him. Remember, the Antichrist kills the two witnesses and they celebrate. The world hates God. They mock God. They have a celebration when the two witnesses die. But then three days later on the street, they get rose again. So they, they absolutely hate him. But we know that they will be completely destroyed and defeated, out of, literally out of the words of his mouth. Now, what's interesting is in this battle, he wins out of the words of his mouth, but we come back on horses. He has robes dripping in blood. Our robes are clean. Our robes are clean. We don't have to fight this battle. There's nowhere in the Bible where we lift a finger in the battle. Our robes are white because we're not the ones doing the fighting. Jesus is the one with that sword out of, it, out of his mouth that defeats the Antichrist. So here's my message. Two hours tonight. My message is this, beloved. We win in the end. We win in the end. You're on the winning side. Hamas is not the side to be on. Violence is not the side to be on. 
Islam is not the side to be on. Right now, the side to be on is I'm on the Lord's side. Well, who do you stand with? I stand with the Lord. I stand with the Lord. So tonight we pray for Israel and we pray for those innocent Palestinians. Come on, let's pray right now. Father, we ask you tonight in Jesus' name, Lord, that you'd bring peace and rest over every innocent person right now. Every innocent civilian, God, bring rest and peace over in the Middle East, God. Lord, be with those innocent civilians in Israel. Lord, be with those innocent civilians in Gaza right now. Father, I pray that you would be with our brothers and our Christian brothers and sisters in Palestine, in Gaza right now. Have your hand on them, God. You've not forgotten about these Christians in Gaza, Lord. Have your hand on them, God. We pray, Lord, that you'd give the Israel the strength to take out these terrorists, God. Give them the strength as you did in days of old, as you did even during the wars of Yom Kippur, God. Give them the strength to do the supernatural, to take out these terrorists, Lord. Lord, we thank you that you're bringing peace of those that are in Israel right now. Lord, we stand because of your word. God, we stand with Israel. And we pray according to Psalms, peace for Israel in Jesus' name. Peace for Israel in Jesus' name. Lord, do what only you can do in Israel right now, God. Lord, have us, let us be ready for these signs of the times, God. Let us be ready. Let us not be asleep. Wake us up. Father, I pray Israel will see you as their Messiah. Jesus, Jesus, open up the eyes of the Jewish people. Open up the eyes of these Orthodox Jews that deny you, Jesus. We pray, God, open up their eyes to you. Let them see Jesus as their Jewish Messiah. Father, we give you the honor, the glory, and praise God. Do a work there. Lord, I pray even like this guy we saw in the video tonight of his daughter being killed. I pray, Lord, comfort him. Comfort every person in Israel and in Gaza that's lost innocent loved ones. Father, I pray you would crush the spirit of Hamas, the spirit of Moloch, the satanic terrorist spirit. I pray, Lord, send your angels to crush the spirit. Just like in Daniel 10, that demonic spirit, prince, the prince of Persia and the prince of Greece, these principalities, I pray, Lord, send your warfare angels to crush these satanic spirits. Lord, right now, have your way, God. Open up their eyes to you, God. Even though Israel has rejected you, you still made an everlasting covenant with them. Open up their eyes to you, we pray in Jesus' name. Open up their eyes to you, we pray in Jesus' name, God. Let them see. Let them see you as their Messiah. The Bible prophesies that Israel will come to know the Lord in those last days. So I pray, God, let them come to know you, Lord. We pray the blood of Jesus over this nation, God. Touch them, Lord. Anoint them, God. These are your chosen people, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Open up their eyes. Remove the scales of stubbornness. Even in this war, God, let them see that you are King of kings and Lord of lords. Father, we know that no one knows the day or hour. And even if it's not the last days, God, it's our last days. Tomorrow's not promise. Lord, let us be right with you. When all of this breaks out, let us be right with you, God. Let us not be sleeping when you return. Let us not be sleeping in your return, God. Lord, we stand We stand with what, who you stand with, God. Have your way, Lord. Be with those in Gaza. Be with those in Israel, God. Lord, stop these, these Islamic terrorists. We pray, God, your, your power to crush this army, just like you did throughout the Old Testament. You crushed armies. I pray you crush the satanic army, Lord. These innocent people that are being killed and slaughtered, these babies beheaded, Father, be with their families that are alive, that have survived, God. Be with them in a time of brokenness and distress and grief. We pray in Jesus' name. Be with Israel, God. Your word commands us to stand and pray for Israel. So tonight, God, we do what your word says to do. And I pray, God, break this, uh, this delusion off of people that are supporting Hamas. Break this delusion off of them. I hate to tell you, but you are delusional if you support Hamas. All these celebrities that are, oh, delusional, demonized, satanic. The devil's the ruler of this world. He's the one running Hamas. Satan himself is cheering on Hamas. Why would you cheer on the same team that Satan cheers on? It's mind-blowing to me. Lord, comfort your people. I pray, Lord, a minimal amount of casualties in this war, God. I pray you would divert Hamas's missiles. I pray you would bring confusion into their camp. And I pray, Father, that you would send your angels to bind up and war against these unclean spirits. These unclean spirits, we know. We know these are demons, Lord. We know they are. We know this is satanic attack. 
on the Jewish people that have been attacked for more than any other race ever. Father, we pray we would be prepared for your coming. Lord, let us be awake. Come on, pray that God would wake you up tonight. Lord, let us be awake, eyes open, awake in these last days, in these last days. Lord, be with the Palestinian Christians right now. Be with the Palestinian Christians right now, I pray. Lord, I pray you'd remove the hate in our heart for Israel. I pray you'd remove the hate in the hearts of those in the chat for Israel. Some of you hate Israel and you don't know why. Remember, the only nation God made a covenant with. You don't know why you hate it. It's demonic. You hate the nation God made a covenant with. Lord, remove that hate out of our heart. We shouldn't have hate for the Palestinians. We shouldn't have hate for those in Israel. We shouldn't hate no man. Lord, I pray, give us love, Lord, for even our enemies, God. Give us love for even our enemies, God. I, I even pray, man, I know this is, this is a crazy prayer to pray, guys. This is a crazy prayer, what I'm about to pray, but I feel it. I've condemned Hamas for two hours. I've said they're satanic. I've showed you the word Hamas in scripture, but I pray even these Hamas soldiers would get saved. This is the crazy thing. Some of you don't believe this, that God can save them. But this is the crazy thing. In Islam, you have to die for your God. In Christianity, our God died for us. So I pray, Lord, that you would save those Hamas fighters. I pray, Lord, you'd save those, those Hamas terrorists. Ha let them have visions of Jesus. Let them get saved in their dreams and visions. Let them renounce this terrorist organization. If the Apostle Paul, who was once known as Saul, was carrying the garments, was getting people drug out of their house, killing Christians. Guys, Saul was a terrorist. Literally, by definition, Saul was a terrorist. Think about that. Saul was a terrorist. And God encountered him. And he wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. The guy I was quoting tonight, Romans 11, was a terrorist. Lord, save these terrorists, God. Won't he do it? Why can't he do it? Save these terrorists, God. Save these terrorists, Lord. Be with the, the Israeli Defense Forces, Lord, as they fight for these innocent people. Be with the innocent Palestinians that are caught in the crossfire. I pray, Lord, you'd help them to flee Gaza. Those that need to flee from the war, I pray, Lord, you would bring resources. You would provide and you'd be with our Palestinian Christian brothers and sisters. But God, we have, we have no tolerance for, ter for these Islamic terrorist organizations, God. Stop it, Lord. Stop these satanic forces. Stop these people that are demons incarnate. I pray, Lord, have your way. Do what only you can do. In your name we pray. Amen. Guys, I know that I'm getting a lot of heat for speaking out. I know why a lot of pastors are silent. Because uh, you can get canceled over this. You can get canceled over, a, which is mind-blowing. Which is mind-blowing. You can get canceled for speaking and say, I stand with Israel, what the Bible tells us to stand for, and standing against terrorists. Imagine a day where you could get canceled, but... You could also get canceled for standing against abortion. You know how many people mad? You know how many people were mad at me when I stood against Roe v. Wade and I said, I praise the Lord that it got overturned and I did podcasts against abortion? You know how many pastors were mad? Well, you can get canceled, brother. Don't speak out against abortion. What? What are you even saying? These pastors and leaders out here are so demonized that they're okay with abortion. Now they're okay with Hamas but I'm the bad guy for speaking out against Planned Parenthood. I'm the bad guy for speaking out against Hamas. I don't really care. There's a high chance this video gets taken down. The 5,000 of you in here might be the only ones that see it. I've recorded it. So if I don't get a copyright strike or a community guideline strike, I'll re-upload it if they take it down. But there's a high chance that this video gets taken down tonight. If you want to support us because all of the content we do is free, you can do that here. Especially because we can't even monetize a lot of our content. The last few videos I did, they were getting stuff just from talking about Israel, where I couldn't monetize. So support us. Support us tonight. You can support right there. You can support monthly. If this ministry is blessing you, I'm going to be doing more content on this. I'm going to be chopping up this stream and posting it as a video so you can share with friends and family. And they can see, they can see the true horror of what's happening right now. Because for whatever reason, the pastors aren't talking about it, the churches aren't talking about it. It's biblical prophecy happening right now. Literally biblical prophecy. So... Whatever, I'm never, I'm not going to be the guy that follows the money and uh, I can't talk about that because I'll lose partners. I've already losing partners for talking about this. I lost tons of partners when I talked about Roe v. Wade. 
Every time I talk about anything controversial, I lose monthly partners. I'm, I'm sure tonight I'll lose a ton of monthly partners. What if though, we gained more than we lost? What if we gained more than we lost? I know I'll lose partners tonight because but you Zionist, you don't know that the church has replaced Israel. Show me that in the Bible. Show me that in the Bible. You won't find it. So be praying for our ministry. We've already gotten so many community guideline strikes on every platform. YouTube's the only place we don't have a bunch, but TikTok, we have like 20. Facebook, we've been restricted for 100 days now. Uh, Instagram, we've had our account taken down twice, which I actually know now who was getting my account taken down, but I'm not going to talk about it because I don't have time to start a war with anybody. But let's just say there's been other ministers that got our account taken down twice, but we've gotten it back. So we're going to keep fighting. We're going to keep fighting. Pray about partnering with us monthly or one time. Excuse me, if you want to give monthly, you can. If those are like, oh, you're asking to give, all of our content is free. I have 1,600 videos for free. I have no paid content. So go cry somewhere else. I don't know what to tell you. The Bible says if you sow financially, you'll reap financially. If you don't sow financially, you won't reap financially. That's what the Bible says. Paul says, sow into those that sow into you. He said, if I sow into you spiritually, I should be reaping physical things. That's what Paul said. Get mad at him. But you can give there. Mods can put it in the chat. We only can do this because you guys keep supporting. That's the only way we keep doing this. You can give on Venmo. You can give monthly on my website. You'll get 70 sermons, 20% off the merch store, all the past partners calls, and then invites to the new partners calls, which will be starting soon. I've just been extremely busy. You can give, become a YouTube member. You can give on PayPal or Venmo. And I know a lot of people got banned tonight. Whatever. Whatever. You can go find another channel. There's plenty of Christians out there that are silent. There's plenty of Christians out there that are standing against Israel. So it, it is what it is. I, I don't care. I don't care. It doesn't bother me. When God says to speak about something, I speak about something. That's the bottom line. When God told me not to speak about politics on my platform during all the election stuff, I don't speak about politics. If God tells me to, I will. If God tells me get off the internet, I'll get off the internet. Guys, I hate to tell you. There may be a day, I'm not trying to be dramatic, where I hit, you know, there's a little button right here when I'm streaming, obviously, I'm live right now, hello, and I'm gonna re I've been reading the chat this entire stream, by the way, and I'll continue to read it and talk with you guys in a minute. There could be a day where there's a button right here that says stop streaming. When I'm done streaming, I click the button and it ends my stream. There might be a day where I hit that and that's it. I don't stream again. I'm following the cloud. I'm following the Holy Spirit. I'm doing what the Holy Spirit tells me to do. I didn't start online in 2019 because I wanted to. I don't want to be in front of a camera. I would rather be in a building with a bunch of people shouting me down as I preach. But this is what the Holy Spirit's told me to do. And God has blessed it. Like I said, we just passed 150 million views. Praise the Lord. And only for his glory. It's all about him anyways. My channel's all about him. Okay, so, so partner monthly with us. Let's gain more partners tonight than we lose. Because I, I promise you I can check right now and I'll tell you right now. We have partnerships canceled right now. I can, I can guarantee it. I can guarantee it. Watch, I'll, I bet you I'll find one in the first five emails. Oh, maybe not. Let's see. Okay, we have a couple here. We have a couple that have canceled. I can see it right here in my email. So it's whatever. It's whatever. I didn't ever start this for money. It's not about income. It's about outcome. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Uh, don't forget that October 24th, next Tuesday, we have a meetup for the Domino Revival movie. It's already sold out, but you can get your ticket in the description and find an area near you, the Domino Revival. Tomorrow night, we'll, we're live at 6 with the Domino Revival cast. The cast of the Domino Revival. Tomorrow at 6 o'clock, don't miss that. Why do people cancel? Because I'm standing with Israel and I'm against Hamas. And sadly, there's a lot of Christians that think the church has replaced Israel and doesn't stand with Israel. So they're mad about tonight. All right, and then, very important, November 18th, I will be in Greenville, Texas. That's an hour from Dallas. I'm telling you right now, we're going to be in Texas. I rarely go to Texas. If you're in Texas, drive to Greenville. November 18th, I have the info on IsaiahSaldivar.com slash schedule. It's a free event. Unlike the cessationists, unlike John MacArthur, our events are free. Okay? <laughs> sorry, I had to. I'm sorry. It's too soon. Is it too soon? It's a free event. And there's 20,000 seats. 20,000 for free. But you need to register. You can get that on my website. It's free. IsaiahSaldivar.com slash schedule. Doors open at 7 a.m. I will be in Texas November 18th. Do not do not get in my chat November 21st and say, when are you coming to Texas? You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. I will be in Texas November 18th in Greenville, an hour from Dallas. 
So <laughs> that's what that's it. That's my date for this year. And I have some other exciting things and things in the making that might happen, but I can't announce them yet. I just know it's excited. You work for Jesus, period. Exactly. Exactly. So I'm not here. Listen, I'm not here to shame anybody. I didn't talk about it for a few days because I wanted to get my facts together so I could present you a healthy case tonight. I don't want to get on here and just start rambling about stuff I know nothing about. I spent the last three to five days learning about all this stuff and figuring out Hamas and where they started all of that. So I'm on here tonight trying to bring you facts, giving you other voices, commentators, Bible historians, other pastors, some news outlets. I'm trying to give you credible sources here. But yeah, I work for Jesus, and so it is what it is. I have not made a cash up. No, I keep forgetting. Freddie and Priscilla, thank you so much. They said, thank you for putting time in the study to open the eyes of the blind. Great study. And then I got your prayer request. Thank you so much, Freddie and Priscilla. You guys are legends, and I will pray for that. Warren and Donna said, so, so, so good. I appreciate all the facts and scriptures. Very informative. Thank you. Thank you, Warren and Donna. Angelia, thank you so much. Crystal Romero said, you're a blessing in my life. May the Lord multiply your finances so the gospel reaches every unlit corner of the earth. Thank you, Crystal Romero. And Laura, thank you. Said, never stop sharing the word of God. Thank you. I'll read the Venmo off stream because I want to read the chat right now. So let me know what you guys thought about tonight. And uh, yes, let's talk about it. It's crazy. We're in biblical prophecy. I told the core group to uh, I told the core group to jump over because I knew you'd still be left. Thank you, Jenny. We're at the end right now, Jenny. But yes, we're two hours in. I didn't think I was going to be talking about Israel for an hour and 50 minutes, but we ended up talking about the end times, the battle of Armageddon. And I just, I went off like I do. So thank you, Jenny. You should rewatch it. Uh, I'm not being biased, but it, it was an informative stream, in my opinion. In my opinion. Era, say, hey, Isaiah, thanks for standing up for the truth. This is why I follow you. Do you think God is against fortune cookies? I personally, the Bible says don't do fortune. So I, I personally am not a fan, but um, I don't know. Fortunes, when the Bible speaks about fortunes, it talks about fortune telling, which is not what fortune, which is not the same as a fortune cookie. I just personally don't do fortune cookies because I just don't. I, I don't get involved in any fortune telling, any of that stuff. Radar Apologetics said, bro, you killed the stream as a messianic Jew. This was amazing. I had to become a channel member. God bless you. Thank you, Radar. Guys, check out Radar Apologetics. He is a messianic Jew. And uh, to get his approval on this, thank you, brother. Because you know 10 times more about this than I do. I'm just trying to learn because I'm trying to be obedient. But yeah, it's it's horrific what's happening. And I, I got to be a voice. I got to be a voice. It felt like an hour tops. I'm glad. Thank you, everyone, supporting monthly <laughs> again. I don't even care. I don't I don't even care. People cancel. Listen, it is what it is. The the monthly partners go like this. They go up and then they go down and they go up and they go down. So it's every few months it's an up and down. It is what it is. We rely on God. I've been 13 years full-time ministry with never a set salary. The relying on God. I've been relying on God for my finances. Even when I pastored a church for 10 years, I didn't have a set salary. So or take an income. I've just always relied on God. Uh, can you speak on the rapture again, what you believe? I have a whole video on why I'm post-tribulation rapture you can go find on my channel. The Lord will provide. Amen. He will. He will. He will. Thank you, Ingrid. Uh, you just had partners canceled just now? Yes, of course. Yes. I've had pa partners canceled as I did the stream tonight. Um, because people that believe in replacement theology do not preach that we should support Israel. And also, sadly, there's Christians that are in support of Hamas, which is so mind-blowing. Um, I think a lot of these Christians out here follow celebrities more than they follow God. So when they see celebrities and movements and... Okay. Some of you... <laughs> Let me just say this. Some of you don't know how a Christian could support Hamas. And it's the same way they could support abortion. There is a lot of... Let me, let me do it this way. There's a lot of pro... Just no... This means parentheses. There's a lot of pro choice or quotes not parentheses sorry quotes there's a lot of pro-choice christians bunny ears I mean fake christians that's what i'm saying so the same way there's christians that support abortion which is the innocent murder of babies ban me for saying it i don't care there's a lot of christians that support terrorist organizations planned parenthood's a terrorist organization like what are we even arguing about here planned parenthood is hamas the Hebrew word Hamas means violence and cruelty. That's literally, I just described Planned Parenthood. So, yes, there's Christians that support terrorist organizations. They support Planned Parenthood. And they support, and they also support uh, Hamas. Because they're not real Christians. That's why. If you support abortion and you're pro-choice, you're not a Christian. It's, it's antithetical. It's impossible. 
It's impossible. It's demonic. The God of Moloch, who wants children's blood, every time an abortion happens, it's sacrificing to the God of Moloch. It's an ancient God. It's all throughout the Bible. And the spirit of violence in Hamas is in Genesis 6. God says, because of the Hamas, I destroyed the world. Not the terrorist group Hamas, literally the vi violence. Hebrew word for violence. Okay. We need a fire remote for the chat. We have one. We have one. You just got to search it there on the chat. Yeah, it's it's despicable. It's despicable what we're seeing right now. Um, Why don't they understand thou shalt not murder? I don't know why. It's crazy to me. Uh, yes. The people in our office and our politics in America are Hamas. Yes. Hamas is the Hebrew word for violence. Again, I'm not talking about the group. I'm talking about the, the, yes, we have politicians, of course, that are just as bad as these terrorist groups that are supporting abortion. Don't even get me started on this. Planned Parenthood is worse. 70 million babies murdered since 1973. Come on, guys, wake up. Wake up. And the fact that our, our president, you know what's weird I thought about today? Do you guys remember when it used to be like, you were proud to be an American. Do you guys remember that? Doesn't it feel like such a long time ago? There was a time, I feel like when I was younger, there was patriotism. We were proud to be Americans. And now it's like, what are we doing? We're bringing transformers to the White House. They're flashing the cameras at the White House. Our president is promoting Dairy Queens and transformers. And if you guys don't know what I'm saying, think about those two things one more time. It just feels weird now. When Israel is right, they are right. When they're wrong, we condemn it. God is not intended in magic genetics. This is about covenant. Yes, Radar. And we and we condemn when Israel does things wrong. For sure. For sure. I need to drink a water here before I get seriously canceled. I'm drinking hint water. A hint of watermelon. Uh, this is like my new favorite water. But yeah, anyways. It just feels weird. Like when I see... No, I'm not sponsored by hint. Listen... If Hint wants to sponsor me, I'll leave the bottle right here where you guys can see it. I'll leave it right here if Hint wants to sponsor me. But if they're not going to sponsor me, no, it goes it goes over here on this side of the desk. No free promotion here, even though I'm already promoting them. Okay. Yeah, it felt like when I was younger, there was a time where it felt good to be American. It felt patriotic. And now I look at like our president's speeches. I look at what the White House promotes. I look at what I just look and go, this is like embarrassing. It feels embarrassing. It feels weird. I want to go back. I want to get back to being... It went from proud to pride. Exactly. It went from proud to be American to pride. 100%. But I wish... Times are just different now. Once America went woke... Yeah. Yeah, Radar. Oh, I know you're agreeing with me, brother. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm agreeing with you, Radar. Sorry, I yell because I'm passionate. But I'm agreeing with you, brother. For sure. Yeah, I know you're. I know you're talking to the chat. I just get excited, man. Tonight was good. I hope they keep the video up. Somebody did a, a video about Hamas being in the Bible and they got their video taken down. So I hope I hope we I hope we get it. I hope it stays up. I really do. But I don't know. I'm sure I'm gonna have tons of copyrights from the news companies. I've already gone gone through copyrights this week, but it's all fair use and reaction, so I'll I'll appeal the copyrights. It'll be no big deal. But what will be a big deal if they give me a copyright strike on they give me a Excuse me. What will be a big deal if they give me a community guideline strike on my channel? That will not be good. But it is what it is. Uh, is Vlad's video still up? The sermon from Sunday, I believe, is still up. Yeah. My son just told me the alphabet community is a race. They told him at school. That's mind-blowing. That's mind-blowing. They're saying it's a race now. It's a race. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. I haven't heard that. His school told him that. I can't, don't even get me started. Don't even get me started. All right. I'm going to get off here in a minute. Got to go put my kids to bed. You violate our policy by using definitions of a word? Exactly. Exactly. Uh, anywhere you guys ask me where I'm, when I'm going to be there, I have no dates for you guys. The Actually, the only dates I have is November. We have the 20,000 seat in Texas. I'll be in January in San Bernardino, which is in Southern California. And in February, I'll be in Antioch, California. Those are the only dates I have for you. Yes, pray this video stays up. Pray this video stays up. But we got to stop with the anti-Semitism. We got to stop with the hate for the Jews. We got to stop with the hate for Israel. 
We got to stop this, guys. This is craziness. This is crazy. We got to stop. Uh, yeah, big shout to Vlad on the coming baby. Yes, we celebrate with Vlad. I praise God. Uh, Vlad's having a baby. It's answered a prayer. He has his whole story on his channel, and we just thank the Lord. Remember, we'll be live tomorrow at 6 with the cast of the Domino Revival, and the movie will be in theaters next Tuesday. We're doing a meetup in Manteca, October 24th. Get your tickets in the description. Guys, I'm telling you, go watch this movie. It's amazing. It's amazing. And I'm glad tonight we had 5,500 in the, in the live. We haven't done that. We haven't had that in a long time. We usually hit 3,000, 3,800 on Mondays by myself, but we haven't hit over 5,000 in a long time. So we, we peaked at 5,500 tonight. We had 5,000 almost the whole broadcast. About 20 minutes in, we hit 5,000 and stayed there, which is beautiful. I, I'm grateful. I'm honored. I'm humbled. I can't believe it. I'm, I'm unworthy. I just thank God. I will get off this broadcast and I will give all the glory, all the honor, all the praise to him. I'll pray. Say, thank you, Lord. It's your kingdom, your glory. I take none of it. It's his work, and I'm I'm humbled by it. It's amazing. So, you know, I'm just trying to stay plowing, putting out content, not getting discouraged, and just keep pushing. I, I You know, I'm not checking my numbers every five seconds. I'm not obsessed with my analytics anymore. I don't care about none of that. I just, I just want to keep serving God. And when we hit milestones, cool. We hit 150 million yesterday. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We celebrate it. He's good. The 150 million views is not for me. It was for the gospel. It's for people reached. And we hit a million subscribers, we'll do a video, we'll do a celebration, praise the Lord, and we'll keep moving. Life is short, time is short. Um, seize the day. Tomorrow's not promised. This might be the last sermon you ever hear tonight. This might be the last live stream you ever watch. I'm not being morbid, I'm being real. Only a full plans for tomorrow. I don't have super chat, and here's why. They take 30%. So if you give $100 towards the ministry on super chat, they take $30 and give you $70. And 30% is a huge cut, in my opinion. So that's why we don't have Super Chat. You got to click like one or two more buttons and give on the PayPal in the comments or my website. My website's the easiest place to give because you literally just type in your name and your card info. You don't have to type in anything else. So that's the best place to do it. Okay. All right. Keep praying also for Kat Von D. I made a video about her uh, yesterday or the day before. And then I messaged her on Instagram that I'm praying for her and she instantly replied with praying hands and a heart emoji. And I, then I also invited her on the podcast because she said she wanted to give her testimony on a podcast. So I said, hey, just so you know, anytime you want to come on, the podcast open to you if you want to come share your testimony. So be praying for her. I did have a brief conversation, you know, like I said, on Instagram with her and uh, I'm praying that God uses her mightily and we got to keep praying for her just like all these other celebrities that God is saving. Yes, the revival in Texas. I don't know about... If you have to register kids, but it should have the info on the website. It's not my, I'm not the one running the event. I'm just preaching there. So guys, pray about monthly partnering. Talk to your spouse. Pray about monthly partnering. And uh, if you do monthly partner on the website, you'll get an email tonight. If not, if you do it on uh, YouTube, you'll get a community unlock there. You'll see it. So we appreciate you guys. Again, we'll be live tomorrow. I hate getting off when there's 4,000 of you. It just feels bad. It's so hard to get this many people on a live it's like you guys knew the fight with the algorithms and trying to get on the thing and setting reminders and trying to get all the things we have to jump through to try to get people on the lives and then have four thousand of you on here it's kind of like oh, maybe i'll hang out for a few minutes and talk it's hard to end it when there's this many people hanging out uh the church in san bernardino is the way world outreach so if you guys have a question shoot it at me and any of you guys saying come here come there i, I can't respond to that it's too many places you guys are asking me to come and all that Oh, yes. Yeah. So, so what happens if... I, thank you, Jenny. I appreciate you. What happens if I get canceled? That's a good question. I have in the description of this video an emergency email, which I spend a lot of money to have that big list of people. And this is what the emergency email is for. You'll get no emails from me if you sign up there. It's in the description. It's called emergency email list. You'll get no emails unless I get banned, which is highly likely. I've already been banned on every platform before. Thank you, Radar, for being on that. Okay, so if you go to the emergency email list and I get banned, I will message you there and we will stream somewhere else. I'll have to go to Rumble or Kick or not Twitch because Twitch is the most woke liberal snowflake platform ever. But I'll go to Rumble or Kick if I have to. Do you know Spencer? No, I don't. I don't know Spencer Nakamura. Yeah, 4,000 is crazy right now, bro. We're literally sitting here talking at the end of the stream. So yeah, it's crazy. But praise the Lord. 
hey, people are hungry for God. We're, we're moving. We're flowing. It's, we just got to keep plowing. Saw your life song last month. Awesome. Thank you. Isaiah, can you see me? Yes, Trinity. I'm reading all the comments, guys. My eyeballs. It worked quick. Snowflake flake platform so good. Yeah, it is, dude. It is. I'm already in California in the snowflake capital of the world. So, you know what I mean? I'm already, sh it struggles real out here. I don't, uh, actually, I do have the day of San Bernardino. Let me give it to you right now. Since you asked and I'm in good mood, uh, I will be in San Bernardino January 28th, Sunday morning. January 28th, Sunday morning. Thank you, Z. I love you, bro. Guys, check out Z Music on Spotify. It's my cousin. He's he's the best out there. That's all I could say. Uh, is Jesus coming soon? I mean, we're in the last days. We're in the last days. If I'm 17, 17 and I'm... Ugh. If I'm 17, am I too young to do deliverance? No. The emergency email is down in the comments. Just fill... Go to the link. In, I'm sorry. In the description, go to the link right there. Go to the link right there. And you can fill in your email and it'll save to my list. And then if I ever get banned, I'll email you. Emergency email list in the description. Tomorrow night, we'll have the Domino Revival cast. Listen, hold on. Don't leave. There's 4,000 of you on here. All you got to do is come back tomorrow, okay? Imagine we start the stream with 4,000. Come back tomorrow at 4 o'clock. Back tomorrow at 4. I'm not 4. 6 o'clock Pacific. 6 o'clock Pacific tomorrow. We'll be live again. So all 4,000 of you come back tomorrow. That's what better flyer could I post than that? Okay, uh, deliverancemap.com. If you need deliverance, you can find someone in your area, deliverancemap.com. Where do I find the code percent for the merch store? It's when you monthly partner. If you're on YouTube, there's a unlock uh, post. And if you're on my website, I'll email you tonight if you just signed up. If you just signed up, you'll get a personal email from my personal email. And it'll have a code for the merch, 20% off. Okay? That's that. Six o'clock tomorrow, okay? Everyone's gonna be back. Yeah. What's the name of your church? Life Song. Life Song in Stockton, California. It's raining where you live? Well, guess what? It's now raining in my studio. The map doesn't work on my phone. Sorry. Use the computer if you have to. It does get laggy because we have like 3,000 people on there. So we're trying our best. Do you have a video explaining how you learn deliverance? Yes. Go to my deliverance training playlist. And I have videos on there on how to do deliverance, seven steps to casting out demons. Like every video you could think of about deliverance is there, like 50 hours. Okay. Do you know David Diga Hernandez? Yes. I had him on episode, I think one or two of my podcast. Why is it raining? It just happened. I don't know. Someone said it was raining where they live. And so I had to join him with the rain, with the rain in the studio. Why is there a bird on screen? Who knows? I don't know why it's raining either. If you can't play pickleball in the rain, can you? Uh, no, you can't. You can't. So, yeah, we're going to have to, you know, play some indoor pickleball. My pastor asked me to start doing deliverances with him. Praise the Lord. That is awesome. That is really awesome. Okay. How's your wife and kids doing? They're doing good. My kids are about to go to bed right now. Do you know Cap, uh, Cap Chatfield? Yes, I know him personally, Cole. We're friends. What does post-trib means? It means you believe... The rapture, let me turn this rain off. I'm sorry, guys. I'm distracting myself here. Put snow on. It means you believe the rapture is after the seven-year tribulation, not before. So pre-trib, you believe the rapture happens before the tribulation. Mid-trib, you believe it happens in the middle. Post-trib, you believe the rapture happens after the tribulation, which is what the Bible teaches, W, w post-trib. <laughs> like, why would God take us out in the most important time to reach people? Anyways, that's a whole other story. Carl's going to get sick. Okay, let's take him out of the snow. I got you. I got you. I got you. Where is he at? D -d 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 -d, there he is. What's up, Paul and Morgan? Uh, we're stuck on the stream, man. There's 4,000 people on here, so I feel bad getting off. So we're just hanging out and chatting for a couple minutes. Well, now there's 3,500. Well, there's, there's 300 on Facebook, so. But yeah, check out Paul and Morgan as well, guys. I love Paul and Morgan. Okay. I love me some Paul and Morgan. I watch their lives. I'm up in the chat. Uh, I love supporting other Christian YouTubers. And I think they're awesome. They probably don't agree with me on every single thing. I don't probably agree with them on every single thing. But we still like it. Well, I hope they like me. I think they like me. If you're in the chat, let me know. Paul and Morgan, do you like me? I like you guys. But yeah, check out their channel, guys. They're awesome. We're at the end of our broadcast. Hey, it's a big crowd. Love you too. Thanks, man. Yeah, man. We had about 5,500 live tonight during the teaching, which was really cool and, and a blessing. So we, we thank God for it. And... Uh, we did a long stream on Israel. 
And I'm gl I, I heard what you guys said, Paul Morgan, the other day about Israel. Like I said, I watch your guys' stuff about uh, feeling pressure to speak about it. And I don't think anyone should feel pressure to speak about it, especially if they don't like know what they're talking about. And I, I didn't speak on it for a while because I just didn't know what was going on. And people kept saying, you need to talk about Israel right now. And I'm like, no, I don't. You're not going to force me to talk about something I don't know enough about. So that's why it took me four or five days to learn. Then I thought, okay, I could get on here and do a, a live and have a little bit of knowledge. But five days ago, last week, I didn't have a lot of knowledge on the situation. So I didn't I didn't go, go live last week and talk about it. Thank you, Clint and Terriano for the... And Cl uh, Clint and Terriano for the... Yeah! Uh, Clint and Terriano for the donation. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Said, God bless you. I Back in 2020, I was watching... I started watching you. I'll cut up for free. Just wanted to let you know. Barber in LA. Thank you, Clint. Thank you, bro. I appreciate you. I do need a fresh cut. I get my hair cut every Thursday morning. Yeah, we like you. How can we not? We feel that quick to listen, slow to speak. Amen, Paul Morgan. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. So yeah, guys, check out Paul and Morgan. Check out Radar Apologetics. If you're a YouTuber, you know, might as well say what's up. Uh, you guys already know Jenny Weaver's in the chat. Check out her stuff. I have her on the channel all the time, so you guys know her as well. But yeah, I did my teaching on Israel, talked about what's going on, talked about Hamas, the Hebrew word in the Bible, gave seven reasons why we should stand with Israel, went over the news stories, did some reaction, and then talked about the coming of the Lord talked about the battle at Armageddon and ended with prayer. So that was tonight's agenda. We went over a lot of stuff, which is why we've been live for two hours and 20 minutes. But here we are at the end. We'll hang out for just a few more minutes here and then I gotta go put my kids to bed. If you guys don't know, I have four kids. I have four kids, four girls. Nine, seven, five, and three. Justice, Journey, Harvest, and Nova. They are my world. Uh, that is my legacy right there. And you guys are, you guys are my number four. I hate to say you guys are my number four priority. Number one is God. Number two is my wife. Number three is my kids. And number four is my ministry. So that's why, you know, there's days where I cancel the live or I don't have an upload because it's, I don't want to, I don't want everyone in the green room to love me and my kids not to know me. So I've always said, I'll never sacrifice my family on the altar of ministry. My family's number one, uh, my God above my wife, my wife above my kids, and then my kids. So y'all, y'all, you should be glad you're number four. I've said that before. You should be glad you guys are not my priority. My, my family is. So that's that. I'm okay with that. Good pickleball. Listen, Paul and Morgan, I, I, I heard they play pickleball as well. So they're way, I'm sure they're way better than me. I've only been playing for like a month. It was funny because I was playing with my buddy the other day. Oh, Jared, you guys know Jared. He was on the podcast last week and we were playing and there was a, these older ladies. They were like, oh, you guys want to play us? And we literally played these ladies that were probably in their mid, uh, mid fifties, early sixties. And we barely beat them 11 to 9. And here we are, these young guys. They were so good. So I'm not that good at pickleball. I have a long way to go, which is why you haven't seen any clips. You haven't seen any clips of me playing because uh, I'm not I'm not good enough. It's embarrassing. But I'm getting better and I'm a nerd. So, you know, I got the, the paddle and I learned, watched the videos. And I, I've watched all the videos already. So, yeah. Paul said, bro, we're going to play one day. I'm coming for you, bro. You'll smash me, bro, but I'm down to play. I don't, I will, I will play you. If you come to California, I'll play you. If I go out there, we'll have to play for sure. We'll make it happen. Jared's stream was hilarious. Let me just say this, guys. I have some clips coming out, some shorts about me and Jared laughing. If you didn't watch, go watch the stream with me and Jared, the seven practical steps to raising godly kids, which is a great stream, by the way. Go watch the last 20 minutes, okay? We laughed. My, I'm starting to laugh thinking about it. We laughed for 20 minutes straight about nothing. We just laughed and laughed and laughed. If you want a good laugh, go watch the tw last 20 minutes of that stream from last Tuesday. Rap for us and all Venmo? Uh, no. I wouldn't even rap for you for $1,000 right now. Some of you like, well, how do you know you can't rap? I rap in my head and it doesn't sound good. So no, I can't rap. Z needs to put you on a track. He has already put me on a track. He put me on a track already. Um, The Spiritual Sniper song. I should, I should react to me and Jared laughing for 20 minutes. We literally were, though. We were laughing for 20 minutes straight. It was fun. Go watch it. Go watch it. Is this the start of Ezekiel 38? I don't know for certain. Like I said tonight, I don't think this is the sign, but it's a sign. So it's one of the signs. The bottom line is biblical prophecy revolves around Israel. Jesus is coming back to the Mount of Olives. Whenever war and stuff's happening in Israel, just, just know something's happening. It's not like the world's ending. Did you look up Tim Hawkins? Not yet, Shane. I'm debating whether I should post a clip of me thinking Tim Hawkins was Stephen Hawkins. Because, uh, 
I don't know. I don't want to get canceled. I don't know. I, I don't I don't think you listen, you can't cancel me, okay? Okay. But yeah, I thought when you guys said Tim Hawkins, I meant Stephen Hawkins. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the whole Daniel Adams thing. I don't have any desire to besmirch anybody or slander anybody or say anything negative about anybody. He's already talked about it in extensively. And he said over and over again how we've all we parted ways. Well, we've parted ways with him. And that's where it's at. So, yes. That's why you don't see me doing any ministry with Daniel Adams. We've parted ways. And that's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to go into detail on it. I don't I don't want my platform to ever be something where I'm just negative, besmirching people, talking bad about people, slandering anybody. And so I won't go into any detail. There is no detail needed. We've just parted ways. And that that is what it is. Um, Yeah, you can't really get canceled if you keep uploading. There's no way to get canceled these days. Yeah, go watch it last week of The End of Me and Jared if you want to see the funny stuff. We love you. Thank you. Do you support Trump? Let's just say this. <laughs> if you're telling me Trump or Biden, it's Trump every day. That's what I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say about that. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if I'm going to make the Stephen Hawking thing a short. Maybe I'll post it and see what the comments are like for 10 minutes. And if they're like, oh, this is distasteful, I'll delete it. But I wasn't trying to be rude or make fun of him. I just legitimately thought I was trying to... I, I don't know. I, it was funny. It was funny. How many kids does Vlad have? This will be his first child. Both of y'all still preaching Jesus at least. Amen. I wish him all the best. Which is why I'm not saying anything. I wish him all the best. Listen, guys. <sighs> um, I'm. Not, uh, anyways, it is what it is. All right. Hail Satan. Cool, bro. Hail Satan. I mean... Yeah, say that on Judgment Day. Say that on Judgment Day. It's going to be an awkward Judgment Day if that's what you're going to be saying. Do you follow Jonathan Kahn? Yes, I had him on the podcast three weeks ago. Three weeks ago. Uh, 3,000 on. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'm going to get off right now. I'm going to get off right now. Tomorrow we'll be live again at 6. We have 3,200 on YouTube and... 400 total on Facebook. Although my personal Facebook wasn't showing numbers, and that's actually the page I have a lot of reach on right now. I don't know why it doesn't show a live number on the personal Facebook. That's kind of weird. Maybe I have it, like, disabled or something? It doesn't show how many are live on my personal. Oh, you know what? <sighs> so dumb. For some reason, when you go live on the personal page, it's, it's, uh... <laughs> I'm so dumb. When you go live on the personal page, it locks it to only you being able to see it. So tonight I've been live on my personal page all night right here. And it's only, and no one can see it but me. So there's that. We probably could add another like 500 on, but it, whatever. It doesn't matter. That's funny. Okay. So I've been live all night on Facebook on my personal page and it's been set to private. You're still here, Isaiah? Yes, I'm here. I'm about to get off. All right. So I'm going to get off. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys tomorrow at six o'clock. Thanks for being here. 5,500 tonight. Praise the Lord. That's a big W for the kingdom and awesome. All right. Good night, Paula Morgan. Have a blessed night. Good night, Radar Apologetics. All of you guys. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. You guys are awesome. And uh, yeah, we'll do some ending music here and hopefully it doesn't get too stuck in your head. God bless. Love you guys. See you tomorrow. Oh, hey, if you want to see a bird see dance, just stick around down there listening. If this, If you've enjoyed this video, Go ahead and hit the like button. Super easy, super free. Helps a lot. All right, so right now, stop what you're doing. Hit like. Okay, I'm going back this down here. Bye. Is in denial, but let the truth be love you guys. Calling Come for the preaching. Christian. Stay for the dancing bird. I love you guys. No Thanks. You guys are awesome. There's power in the blood, and that's never going to change. Go check out all these other YouTubers I mentioned. Some people are haters. I'm not a hater. Go follow these Christian YouTubers. I, I love it. I love all these channels out here. Demons start to tremble. Devils go insane. The fear of the fangs get hotter. Best they try to run away. Try to hide the rabbit. You miss Carl? There he is. Every unclean spirit must come out in Jesus' name. Uh, this is Come Out in Jesus' Name by Jeffrey Jocelyn. Come Out in Jesus' Name. 
Okay. It's the movie soundtrack to the movie we had. You can read it in the Bible. It's written there in red. Never be deceived if you believe what Jesus said. We're running out of time. The song has come out in Jesus' name. Turn the darkness and the light. So let the fire begin. Demons start to tremble. Devils go insane. They feel the flames get hotter as they try to run away. Yeah, the kids love the bird, which is why we can't get rid of them. Kids love them too much. Let's be honest, we love them. The adults must come out in Jesus' name. Carl emoji, you're right, we do. It's so funny, dude. No one knows. Love you so much. Thanks for being here. Shout out to all the YouTubers that support other Christian YouTubers. Uh, I love all of you. You guys are amazing and awesome. And I pray your channel grows 10 times bigger than mine. Keep plowing. Don't be discouraged. You guys are awesome. We'll see you tomorrow night live. Next Tuesday, Domino Revival Live. And we'll post a lot of these videos tonight in shorts or in clips for you guys to share with friends and family. Love you guys. Good night. Bye.